Yo, what's good? Is my audio all right? I don't know. Ever since I got the Bluetooth headphone, I can't tell what's connected to what anymore because I have to constantly change my connection. But yes, another week. Okay, it's good. Good. But yes, another week, another another session of Wani Gator. Ugh. Ah, the drum is hit in. I've also noticed that there might be slight delay between me and the game audio, so I'll try to not hum too much. So I think last time we left off in the middle of a day. Yeah, last time we left off sipping lean and then hanging out with Olivia in our uh, abode. So, yep. New day, new school. Are we in? Yes. Okay. Thanks to Olivia's advice in cooking, I finally made my recovery and returned to school. Ooh, what's with the jazz saxophone? And I'm glad to be back. Let me just rearrange OBS a bit. It's a bit on the bigger side for no reason. Okay, there we go. I'm glad to be back. I felt like I'd missed so much while I'd been gone. So much I needed to catch up on. Is this the first time I hear this track? Feels like it. I mean, I did manage to finish all the assignments that Ben had sent to me. But I feel out of the loop with other things. Like gossip about me. Damien tried to give me the rundown of, all of it all during PE. I'm still in shock over how bad some of them got. Up to cartel drug running and FBI's most wanted. Nah, no, I didn't do anything to change the game audio volume, so I guess it is just the first time we heard this. I don't think that's even possible in just a week. The end of class bell rings throughout the school, signaling the start of lunch. As everyone in class is packing up their things, Mr. Yadakon speaks up. Alright everyone, make sure you complete the assignment by next class. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the day now. Oh, and Inko? I stop at the mention of my name as I throw on my backpack. Could you wait a moment? I have something I wish to speak to you about. Yeah, of course. Olivia looks back in the classroom entrance, waiting for me. Don't wait up on me, I'll meet you at the table with the others. With a shrug and a nod, Olivia wheels herself out the door and down the hall. Everyone else leaves the classroom until it's just Yadakon and I. Please, have a seat. I take the seat closest to Yadakon's desk, putting my backpack down as well. Mr. Yadakon himself gets out from his chair and walks around his desk, leaning against it. So, I'll be quick about it. I got a job that needs doing. I... Uh, up, up, up. You've missed assignments and need makeup work, and I need some extra help with something. Something I think you'll be very interested in. Some good friends of mine are getting married in a few short days, and they've hired me to be their photographer. And given the excellent learning experience, <coughs> child labor, <coughs> I thought of you. 
Yo, child labor! Me? Yes, if you want to, of course. I could always call in some associates to help me out, but I thought adding in some extra credit would sweeten the deal. What would we do be- uh, what would we be doing? There's a broad smile on his face and a distant look in his eyes. Well, you'll be my apprentice in this case. You'll not only be helping me set uh, you'll not only be helping set up more elaborate photos, you'll also be doing a lot of independent shots. In the pet, you mean I'll be taking my own pictures? Yep. In fact, you'll be using my SLRs and lenses for this to keep all the shots uniform. The idea of finally getting to use something like Mr. Yadakon's thousand dollar cavon <laughs> or cavern makes my head swim. So, what do you say? Interested? It certainly seems like a hefty task, even if Yadakon would be there to help us. Then again, Yadakon wouldn't be offering the job if he didn't think I was capable of doing it. This would technically be my first official photography gig. Yeah, I think you should take it. And a wedding shoot to boot. It sounds so daunting, yet enticing. I would love to. Alright, sounds like a done deal. It's after school today, we can talk about it more later. Oh, today? For now, you should be going along to lunch. Thank you, Mr. Yadakon. I give the teacher a nod and grab my backpack. Just as I head out the door, my curiosity gets the better of me. So, who's the lucky couple, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, the school nurse, actually. The husband-to-be is also a good friend of mine. Huh, neat. I make a mental note to give my well wishes to the nurse if I see her before the wedding. With that, I wave Mr. Yadakon goodbye and head down the hallway. Wait... Friday? But I was going to practice painting then. Ugh, I already agreed to go. Even if I didn't, it's real photography. It's not even a question which I should go to, but jeez. Hey, I want to give Olivia a heads up though. It's like the universe is conspiring against me to never stop drawing stick figures. <laughs> I finally meet up with Olivia, who's waiting near the entrance of to the cafeteria. The grassy green girl is leaned over, a sour spout scrunching her maw close as she eyes the passerbys. When she notices I've moved into her airspace, she perks up immediately. She wants me. Seeing the transformation is surreal, and I chew on my cheek to keep from laughing as I watch her muscular tail wag happily. Finally, took you long enough. Yeah, sorry that took so long. You didn't have to wait for me, by the way. Eh, I can manage waiting if it means eating with you. Oh, let's go! I can feel a smile tug on my lips just from hearing Olivia say that. Mind if I push your chair in? Using me as a battering ram through the crowd now, huh? Yeah, something like that. Hmm... I... but only because you ask. But give me your backpack, I'll use it as a shield. When I grab the handles, Olivia moves her tail up to grab my wrist, like at the arcade. Alright, charge! Yes, ma'am! I start- <laughs> what the fuck?! <laughs> I start marching through the crowd of unruly fa famished teens clamming for their daily meal. I <laughs> vehicular manslaughter on a wheelchair. Olivia turns her head to see to be <laughs> Olivia turns her head to me to say something. So what happened with Yadakon? You in trouble or something? Huh? Oh, nah. Yadakon just had a proposition for some extra credit. Really? What was it? He wants me to join him at a wedding and help him out with a photo shoot. Says he thinks it'll be a good learning experience. Oh, well that sounds pretty interesting. Did you take it? Yep, could be could be a good way to hone in on what I know. Plus, that extra credit can help make up for the time that I was sick. You mean when you nearly overdosed on that cough syrup cocktail you made? Yeah, that. Wait. Oh, what? I didn't say anything. Crowd's too loud here. The Baryonyx chuckles to herself. I'm left rolling my eyes, letting her claim victory in this exchange. By the time we've got our lunch, it's a simple matter of locating Damien and Liz by the telephone pull neck. For whatever reason, they're at a more sequestered table today, and when we arrive, it's pretty obvious why. Ah, Mia's back. Took you too long enough. Yeah, yeah. I expected more from Olivia. Something more graphic. 
Instead of, instead, Olivia rolls herself the rest of the way, taking her designated spot at the table at the head of the table. I take the spot adjacent to her, all while keeping a wary eye on the pink parasol off uh, parasaur off uh, parasaur all office. Oh okay, god, that's a mouthful. It seems like Mia's rage against me has simmered down over time, but that air of uncertainty and uneasiness still wavered around her. The best I can do is act friendly. Hey Mia, uh, is there something you need? Need? Nah, just here to catch up with my good pal here. While the red-scaled menace turns towards Olivia, her eyes, her own eyes remain locked on her soggy chicken she's eating mechanically. I thought you were asking Liz for her homework, though. That too. All right, here, guys. A pair of soda cans are rolled down the table, and I think Raptor Christ I'm able to catch both before they ram into my tray of questionable lunch meat. You guys were taking a while, so I grabbed the drinks today. No, you didn't. Mia gave those to you. Well, she did it because I thought about doing it. <laughs> Is that how that works? She's trying to bribe you for the math answers I helped you with earlier. Lizzie, I can't believe you would imply something like that about me. No, Liz Olivia's not having fun with the bone. But it's true. Hey, free soda is free soda, man. At any rate, real reason I'm here is... Say, Olivia, you leave your phone at home or something? People's trying to contact you all day. Oh. Olivia pulls her phone out from her jacket pocket. I catch a glimpse of her wallpaper, a comical portrait of guts that she probably doodled. Yeah, I ran out of service for the month. What the hell? You don't got a proper monthly plan? Hey, me neither. Let's go, Olivia. Yeah, Damon is a believer in $20 is $20. Honestly, respect to him. Free soda is free soda. I got more important things to be doing than this, you know. If they want to see Olivia so bad, why send you and not just show up themselves? Shut it. Who's so important for all this anyways? Who'd you think? Ben. Ben wants to talk to Olivia. Hmm. Why does she want to talk to- Oh, why does he want to talk to Olivia? Is this 20 freaking questions? How the hell should I know what's really going on between my boyfriend and Hot Wheels here? All that matters to me is if Olivia here is gonna fix it or not. I'll think about it. Ugh, whatever. I'm out of here. Smell you later, Gator! Mia storms off, leaving Olivia looking very sour. Uh, things alright with Ben? Olivia rests her arms on the table and slumps her head in. I don't want to talk about it. Where'd her bright mood from before go? Well, anyways, Damien, you really shouldn't condone cheating, even, as some <laughs> even with something as simple as math homework. But you helped me out with it! That's... different. I helped you with it, and I think you're getting something out of it. Like the answers! What I mean is, in comparison, Mia's just trying to be lazy, and she's only cheating herself. What's the issue, then? What's the issue? Yeah, I get free soda, someone you hate tricks herself with a staying stupid, and everyone thinks they win. It's great. Ooh, actually, he's he's, he's got a big brain on him right now. You scare me sometimes, Damien. Guess I'll have to ask Ben what's going on if I see him later. In the meantime, Olivia's disposition only keeps getting more and more dour. <laughs> Level zero mind games. <laughs> Honestly, that's very impressive to even have that level of genius. <laughs> I try to think of something to help her cheer up, but I keep coming up with dead ends on just what could work here. There's gotta be something. I can't just leave her in such a sour mood. Oh, how about that? Hey, so what's the deal with your phone background? Oh, you noticed it? She flips her phone on and shows me her background. Alright, show me the guts. Oh, it's a little doodle of guts. Yeah, drew it up the other day. Got the curves just right first try, so it's pretty cool. I'll bet. Is he with you today? Nah, I left him home. How often do you bring him? Eh, not often. Maybe once or twice a semester, and even then it's just when I'm bored. 
Although once he was just in my hoodie when I left for school. Unexpected. It was. Here, I got some pics saved. The screen displays the small creature sat atop a desk with its skinny tail clutched to its, chi to its chest tightly. I don't know why, but he holds his tail like that all the time. I feel Damon and Liz hovering, hovering behind me, their eyes locked onto the adorably fat creature on screen. I don't know who's Cuckoo's, probably Liz. But Olivia rolls her eyes and swipes to the next picture of the cute pet, now in transparent ball and looking confused. For the remaining minutes of lunch, we just sit huddled around Olivia's phone, entranced by her sweet little rat as it did the most mundane things. Yet, Gut's method of doing them was way too undeniably cute. And that's what really got to us, and made time fly faster than we, we, we could even notice. Yeah, rats are cute. I blink a couple of times and stretch my arms and legs as I get up from my desk. Mrs. Prockling really knows how to make 40 minutes feel like 80. Well, at least it's time for pr to practice painting. For real, for real. Wait, no, no, Yadakon roped me into the photo shoot. For sure presses N and starts rat threads. Is N like the animal board? I didn't even know they had one. Can't practice painting, can't get good at anything. Why is it every time I try to actually improve, something like this happens? At this rate, I'll never get good enough to get a, gr <laughs> to get a real following. I haven't gotten to actually have a whole afternoon to practice at all. Still, there's no way in hell I'm missing this. I ended up meeting with Ben and Yadakon right as he was locked in his classroom. While our teacher made the assignment, internship, apprenticeship, while he made it all out, while he made it all sound simple, I was still subjected to some paperwork. Something about liability waiver or something. You know, in case something happens to us, like a surprise attack by five teenagers in multicolored spandex, not the Power Rangers. Oh, sorry, no, it's the Dino Ranger, or the Raptor Rangers, right? I wonder if that happens often. We still filled the form out as the instructor gave an overview of just what exactly Ben and I would be doing. There's few structures out here, save for one at the edge of the cliff. Ben's the first one out of the cramped car with an alarm armful of telescope, uh, nah, <laughs> telescoping black stands. I follow his example, unloading the vehicle. Alright, you two. Remember what you're doing tonight? Yes, sir. I These cameras look like fake, but real at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. Like, like the, the body part here looks like they, they just took it like an actual PNG of like a camera. And they just like drew a little circle doodle in the middle. Yes, sir. After we set up a photo station in the corner of the hall, we'll be taking turns wa walking the reception, taking pictures of the guest. Perfect. I'll be with the wedding party the entire time. So if you need me, just look for the gaggle of similarly dressed women screeching and you'll find me. He grins as he helps carry the last of the lightest equipment from the trunk. Remember, this is actual work, so be polite, be efficient, but most importantly, Ben and I sit upright at attention, ready for any order a teacher will give us. Have fun! Yeah, I knew that. But, trust me, the clients will appreciate it more. Finally finished with the unloading, I inhaled the mixed aroma of ocean and flowers. While I find the scent energizing, Ben seems to have the exact opposite reaction. His brows pinch together in disgust as he tries in futility to fan away the air with one hand while covering his nose with the other. Uh, I think I'm going to be the sick one next, in, <laughs> next with this weather. L least the view's great. That it is, yeah. Mr. Yadakon leads us through a small garden out front and into the reception hall. I just noticed Yadakon has not changed at all. Man came straight from school. It's a spacious wedding tent adorned with all sorts of flora and high-end lighting, keeping the place warm and lit. Okay, you guys. Okay, you guys know how to set it up here. I'm going to get. I'm going to get the business. Yes, sir. He is so dapper, he's got that flamboyant artsy look to him. He leaves us stepping into the ongoing ceremony with a primed camera and tripod. Oops. Oh, oh, page up. Ben and I exchange a single glass before we both resign ourselves to the daunting task. 
Do dinos sweat? I don't think reptiles sweat, so no. That's kind of the yeah no dinosaurs don't sweat. First on the list is the telescopic stands for the cameras. From experience, it doesn't take us too long to get those in place. Next are the reflectors and strobe lights, all packed in heavy cases that have to be hauled inside. By my third case, I'm already exhausted. Shoot, I thought gym class would have prepared me for this. Bzzz. My phone buzzes. I might as well take a breather. Opening up the notification, I discover it's from Olivia. Hey, Shades. Hi, Olivia. Got service back? Oh, I like about that. Oh, ah, yes, with the sunglasses, of course. Saw you leave with the Otacon after school. What's up with that? I'm helping with a wedding photo shoot. You? At a wedding? Did Yadakon give you a better jacket for it? My jacket is cool enough. So where at? He said it was someplace called Clarkson Lookout on the way over. Wait, really? That place is a bunch of scenic views. If you see any good landscape shoots, take one for me. Sure, if I get the time. No, do it now. Okay, Guts. Alright, new reaction image. Just shut up. I'm gonna screenshot this one too. Ah! Perfect. Cute and threatening message received. Flushed rat with a gun, exactly. I am no longer asking. Jeez, well this is as good a spot as any. The sun's starting to set, so it doesn't make for some so it does make for some pretty nice atmosphere. Maybe Olivia wants to paint another landscape. In the distance I see a few sailboats and yachts. Further beyond the further beyond a freighter or two, the seas sure are crowded these days. I take the picture and send it over to Olivia. Ooh, that's pretty good. Thanks. Wait, what's the capital F face mean? I can't picture thanking me like that in reality. The thought alone of her doing something in so sweet a manner. Inko, this thing weighs like 80 pounds. I'm not doing all the work. Oh, right. I left my camera hang loose around my neck while assisting Ben with setting up the last of the standing reflectors. Setting up meant not only the cameras, but a large chunk of the incomplete decor prep. Which meant carrying out loads and loads of heavy cases loaded with strobes, reflectors, cloth sheets, and so many telescoping post pole stands. Following his instructions, Ben had set up a small red carpet path leading to a glamour shot station. And meanwhile, I was finishing making sure the marked out spots within the room had the right combination of flash strobe and slash or reflector. By the time our teacher had come back, I had just placed the final light in position. As guests start walking down Ben's handmade path, I skirt along the edge with my borrowed high-end camera. The DSLR's clicks are muted compared to the chattering guests, and while I think I managed to catch some decent shots, I'm just not really feeling it today. Is something wrong with me? And voila! Ben was having a much easier time working at the makeshift studio we'd built in the corner. Couples would simply walk up and stand before the backdrop of the massive window of the cliffside in the ocean. And Ben had the brilliant idea to not only set up Yotacon's lone camera, but also his own so he'd capture the couples from two angles at once. He looked happy with each and every shot he took, and the people always chatted him up right after. And here I am, doing my best not to scowl as I look over the blurry shot I'd messed up. Blurry because my hands are shaken. I guess I'm nerve- I hadn't noticed it till now that my main messaging app had been going off. So is it going well? Hardly, I think Ben's turning it into a competition. Are, are you winning? No, not really. Beat him for me? Oh, pleading face? Oh, she's using the pleading face, you have to now. That wasn't a real message. I try to ignore my phone for now. I don't think anything will calm my nerves at this point. 
That feeling of anxiety only grows as time marches on. I can't seem to get any one picture just right, and Ben zooming around as efficiently as he is isn't helping. Well, that's not all. Olivia's messages are just throwing me off. I can't believe it. He's being distracted by women. Just break his flashing stick thingy, lol. <laughs> then his pics will be super dark. How out of date is Olivia to think we still use flash pans? Or lock him in a bathroom or something. I don't think that's sportsmanlike or legal. Oh, I just remembered I need another pick. Can you try shoving him into the wedding cake and taking a pic of him smashed on the floor? I need it for, uh... <laughs> Muse! <laughs> that. Do it for me, pleading face again! Oops. Uh, uh... I did not know I could scroll up. Come on, that's just violent. Just barely within my peripheral vision, I spot a perfect shot of an older couple, the parents of the groom, I believe. There, that's a good chance! I bring the borrowed camera up, look through the viewfinder, and see... ...that the parents have already moved away and into another group. The camera slips from my grip, but luckily the next trap holds it safely against my chest. Okay, I need a break. I find an appropriate place to sneak outside and go around the building, slumping down against the brick siding. It's really twilight now. The ocean's reflection of the sun is getting very close to meeting the real thing. My phone buzzes once more and something in me jumps. It's not fear though, just wish I knew what it was. Olivia sends a video of Guts running around a maze she put together using cardboard and school supplies. When he comes out the other end, she gives him a grape to bite into. Uh, to bite into in her palm. Aw. Uh, I was never really fond of rodents, but seeing Olivia's videos and little doodles is really starting to sway me. There's something about seeing Olivia having such a strong bond with Guts caring for him that warms my heart. It's hard to believe that this is the same girl that used to give me nothing but icy stares when I first met her. I'm glad she feels comfortable enough with me to let her defenses down and be herself. As I continue to snapping photos, my trek around the hall to find good photo ops le leads me to the stage where the DJ once was. Shame that I didn't get any good shots of him while he was here. Maybe Ben got some decent pictures. Looking through the camera lens, I see that there's a gentleman sitting on the steps that leads up to the stage, finishing off a cigarette. There's someone over on the steps taking a deep drag of a cigarette and blowing the smoke up towards the window. A truly iconic display of suavity. Before I know it, I've taken several shots. He seems like he wants to be left alone, but he doesn't mind, right? Hey, kid. Whoa, what a... Wait, that face looks like something... What is that from again? At least get my good side, will ya? Oh. I step closer, readjusting the camera settings and scrambling for an explanation. Sorry about that, I wasn't sure if you wanted my attention. Eh, it's alright. People say I got, uh, a rank kind of resting bitch face. Though I can't lie, I'm pretty exhausted, kid. Especially after- oh, that's the groom. Especially after I had to carry the news- the new missus down the aisle, all the way to the car. Ah, so this is the groom. So you gotta take a photo or what? Oh, right, sorry. As I raise my camera, the groom takes a thinker-esque pose, taking a drag from his cigarette. He wasn't the first game? Like you mean Snoot game? After a few clicks and a couple of slight adjustments to my position, I believe I got some pretty good shots in there. There we are. The groom blows out a plume of smoke from his mouth before leaning over to see the captures. It smells like a Vegas hotel. I gave the groom time to look at each photo thoroughly before moving to the next one. Hmm. These are pretty good, kid. Managed to take this mug of mine and look halfway decent. Let's out a scratchy chuckle as he takes another puff of a cigarette before snuffing what little was left of it onto the floor. Thanks. Say, if you don't mind me asking, what are you doing all the way over here? It's your big day, isn't it? As the groom lets out another plume, he's already begun to dig up another cigarette. Lighting the new cig casually, he begins to inhale. 
and keep inhaling. Uh, he holds up a finger as he continues inhaling until the cigarette is finished and he finally exhales. And he finally exhales a stream of lung cancer slow. <laughs> And he finally exhaling a stream of lung cancer slowly over the course of 30 seconds. Wow, he's got good breath control. Sir? Of course it is. Just having a little rest is all. I mean, this has been the happiest day in my life, but it's tiring as all hell. The missus is certainly having fun, and yet in a few hours when we're in our new no longer bachelor pad, I'll be listening to her as she moans about how sore she is. The groom lets out another plume of smoke, this time through his nostrils. But hey, if that's the price I gotta pay, holy matrimony and all that jazz. Definitely feels like the groom is laying it on a bit thick to who he is a essentially a stranger to him, and yet I can understand what he means. You know, you've been going around a whole reception snapping photos, why don't you take a break too? He motions his hand to the nearby stage as an available seat. I settle myself on the stage as the groom then fiddles with a small packet. Looking closer, it's a still sealed pack of cigarettes. Trent told me a, a bit about you, you know. Who? Your camera teacher, or whatever he's called at your school. Says you're a good kid and all, though a bit clueless. Hey. The groom lets out another guffaw as he cracks open the pack of cigs and plucks out a fresh cancer stick. This man smokes a lot, wow. His words, not mine. How do you know him? We've known each other for ages. He actually helped me meet the missus. Funny how that works out. Whoa, Mr. Yadakon was your wingman? Heh, <laughs> he always hated how I told him that. I'd given, I'd given him a lift to some field trip he had to chaperone. Don't know why, he could have just taken the school bus. But as soon as I got there, I met the rest of his co-workers. Including my would-be wife. Petro prick tricked me into also chaperoning too, saying I could use the time to get to know her better. Jeez, maybe I should be asking him. Well, no, I can't. <laughs> can't what? Nothing important. Slip of the tongue, if you will. I haven't teach you how to tell you how to court a fair a lady friend, right? Hey, no. Another one of his students, your classmate, yeah? It's not like that. Aw, oh, come on, I know you want to talk about girls. That's always fun. Humor me a bit. She's just a good friend. The word tastes bitter on my tongue for some reason. Why the fuck you lying? Sure, kid, sure. You've got a few more minutes of quiet while Bridezilla and her maids of murder fight over that bouquet. I quickly glance over to see a woman twice my age wielding a folding chair like it was a battle axe. Trent can't help you there, <laughs> but I can. So this is a good friend of yours, what's she like? Well, it's a bit comp- it's a bit of a complicated history. Uh oh? I mean, when I first met her, she was very cynical and sarcastic. Well, she's still sarcastic, but in a lighthearted way. Even with her friends, she was a little distant. But when she's painting or gushing about some franchise or obscure anime, there's this unashamed excitement and passion in it. I haven't met anyone with that kind of energy before. Once you get to know her, she's just nice under it all. That everything? Well, yeah. I think she drew me carrying her once. Woohoo! I can't whistle, so. Kid, what the heck is an anime? <laughs> well, shoot. He slides the ring off his finger and holds it up to me. Oh, you want this? Sounds like you need it more than me. Jeez, ooh, that's smooth as fuck. Can't get in. I'm kidding. But dang, sounds pretty cut and dry to me. Never had a crush before? Not at anyone I know personally. Mm, your folks together? Yeah. They love each other too, yeah? Yeah, I guess they do. You guess? It's complicated. They're around us so little, I don't even know what their love looks like, how they interact. If they even love each other at all. They've never told me their story, why they're together. Anything that would prepare me for the future was outsourced. As far back as I remember, whenever my parents weren't around, there was a screen nearby. iPad kid. So sad. And they weren't around often. I've always had that little electronic friend in my pocket telling me how great I was at everything. That's been my only help to get through life. 
All the best ways to have the best friendships, hobbies, romance. But it feels worthless now. I'm not prepared. I don't even know if what this is is love. This guy seems to think so, though. He'll help me out. I see him putting some words together now. Let me give you a little anecdote, kid. The groom finally lights the cigarette, though this time he's slow to puff on it. Woo -hoo! See my beautiful brat over there? He motions with the dull ember of his smoke to where the bridesmaid were, were still violently wrestling and the bride acted as a referee. Even if we had never met and this was a happenstance meeting, I'd see her over there. And I just know, I love her. Yeah? Yep. Is that it? Yeah. Aren't you trying to give me a little push? Convince me I like this girl? You're the one who wanted advice. There it is. I thought you were going to go on a bit more about love. Why the hell would I give a speech about love? I know what it is. You know what it is. But there's no groundbreaking advice that'll make that'll make everything make sense, and you don't need me to convince you. You're just looking for reasons to not believe what's right in front of you. Oh. Break's over. Gotta run. The man gets up, dusting off his pants and flicking the cigarette butt into the trash. Hey, take some great pictures of me, will ya? No more moping. No more moping. You're on the clock. He jogs into the crowd to meet up with his bride. My phone buzzes in my pocket. What timing? I reach into my pocket and pull out my phone, squinting at the screen. An unread notification from our group chat. Shoot, do I have time to be on my phone right now? Maybe I can talk to Damien about this. He's known Olivia for a while. Benna and Olivia used to be friends too, right? Would he be able to help? I should probably focus on what I'm here to do. Besides, I don't want to let the groom down. But this is Olivia we're talking about. I don't want to do anything without knowing as much as I can. Uh, oh, oh wait, I have to make a decision here? Hold on, I'm just gonna turn on the lights, it's getting a bit dark. Get the girl? You're not paid. True, I am not being paid. But... I do also want to be, get, be good at this. Okay, well consider this. What's right in front of me right now is a wedding. <laughs> not Olivia. Hmm... Why is this the hardest choice I've had to do so far? What the hell? <laughs> I'll, I'll make a save. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like... Like, I don't think it's the right time, but at the same time, I don't know when is the right time. <laughs> oh, well, fuck it. I'll listen to chat, whatever. I can't go into this without being prepared. I really don't want to let Olivia down, especially all I've done for her. What kinds of things does Olivia like? Oh, what kind of things do girls in general like? I might be able to find some pointers online too. No, don't look online. By the end, I can be a good boyfriend. See, this sounds wrong already. This- I don't like- I don't like how he's talking right now. I just need to figure out how. No, no, sorry, I don't like how he's talking right now. I'm gonna choose the other option. I can't afford to slack off right now. Besides, I made a promise to the groom and I don't want to let him down. Or Mr. Yotacon for that matter. Listen, man, I don't think- I don't think that's the right thing to do, because the way he's talking makes it sound like he's giving up on who he is as a person, for the sake of Olivia. And that's not how you should do it. Especially when you say, oh, I'm gonna look on online guides. <laughs> like, that's just, that's just asking to be doomed. 
What if she's dying? What do you- what do you mean, what if she's dying? What does that have to do with anything? I silenced my phone and slid it into my jacket pocket, pushing off the wall and taking hold of my camera. Where should I even start? I think I have a few ideas. With the groom's words still ringing in my ear, I find a second wind of sorts. I can't really understand it. I feel like I'm already picking out prime shots from just scanning over the hall. While Ben has continued his more autonomous rapid-fire approach with the staccato clicking of his snapshots, I've been singling out couples in their own moments just scattered throughout. I think some of them have even noticed, seeming to maneuver themselves out of the parasaur's view. Young man, over here! An elderly dino catches my attention, waving me to the, her table where she and her family are sitting. We need a good Christmas card photo if you would be so kind. Of course, ma'am. A large group moved to one side of the table for me, smiling sincerely at my lens. The first shot seemed perfect, but for their sake, I make sure to take a couple extra. Thank you. Do you know how long these will take to be developed? The photos should be developed fairly quickly. We'll be sure everyone gets these before the end of the month. They smile and nod, letting me return to... Don't forget us! Yeah, get me and my wife! The next, My next client's pulling me aside to take shots of them in a secluded corner. And after that, some of the bridesmaids have grabbed me to take shots for, her, for them. It isn't long before even some of the servers are wanting pictures of themselves posing in front of the decorations. Somehow, I'm able to squeeze my way out of the mayhem and make my way towards the back of the venue in order to get some much-needed fresh air. Shortly after, I notice Ben doing the same thing, though he manages to do so far more gracefully by talking his way out of whatever request the wedding goer goers have for him. Makes me wish I was better at, com at communicating and asserting myself in these kinds of situations. Ben takes notice of me and approaches at a very casual pace, with no one else seemingly taking notice of him. Taking a breather? I just give Ben a nod of my head, causing him to smile and adjust his glasses with his index finger. Ah, not with his middle finger. Well, the wedding's almost finished, so the worst of the workload's behind us. That was a good... Ben checks his phone. Eight hours? Jeez. Man, yeah, my legs are starting to hurt. You're telling me. You don't even have a tail. How do you think I feel? I mean, wouldn't you be able to use your, he your tail to help, like, support your weight, though? We sigh together. It's the first bit of silence we've had in a while. Across the room, the bride slumps into a chair, trying to kick her heels off. The groom sees me and shrugs a bit, smirking. So, how are you feeling about the pictures you've taken? Hmm? I think I'm pretty confident in mine. Once you have the right equipment, it's just a matter of socializing right and getting the right shots of these sorts of events. I'm satisfied. You? Honestly, I'm not sure. I've been taking all these pictures, right? But it's like... Something's missing. Missing? You make it sound like some grand art thing. I know, I know. Back across the room, the bride motions to her new husband. It looks like it's the time of night for him to carry her out in his arms like in all the movies. She was probably not expecting those slick moves to position her on his back like a child. He laughs to himself while she pouts loudly and holds onto his hair to keep her balance, or to keep balance. Aww, that's a cute picture. It looks juvenile, honestly, as the bride taps at the exhausted groom's head with balled-up fists, but he's laughing. A laugh so infectious that her pout is replaced with delighted giggles of her own when he finally catches her hand in his and just holds it. Once again, they're talking, and the bride is melting into putty at his quiet words. For how menial it is, and how crude that guy was earlier, that understanding and genuine playfulness between them? Without a doubt, without a thought, I'm already looking through the viewfinder and making the focusing adjustments for the perfect shot. The shot is cheesy, but sincere. They both look beyond exhausted, their clothes showing the wear and tear of the night, and their body language screaming their need for sleep. They will not be getting sleep, though. <laughs> And also, the smiles they have as they try and look at each other in their awkward positions speak metric volumes of just how happy they are after it all. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do what? What? Shouldn't it be that? Huh? Do what? You took a picture just now. 
Did I? When did my finger get placed over the shutter button? I guess I did. I checked my the new entry in the camera roll. Careful, that's an easy way to waste a lot of memory. Should probably just delete it. Oh, Ben, 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 Ben. Delete it, huh? I think I'll be fine. I actually got a good feeling about it. It seemed pretty natural, you know? Ben rolls his eyes. If you say so. Alright, the cracks are starting to show in Brent and Ben's uh, facade for uh, at least my impressions of him. Before the parasaur turns to go back to his assembly line, photo taking, I grab his shoulder. By the way, Ben. Hmm? Mia stopped by our lunch table earlier today to complain about Olivia. Oh boy. Said you were trying to call her, but was upset, but was upset she wasn't picking up. I don't want to pry into your personal business, but aren't you two on bad terms? Huh? What are you talking about? What? I haven't spoken to Olivia in ages. Huh. I thought you were above gossip, Inko. Sorry, I... Alright, you boys ready to pack up? Pretty long night, huh? Our teacher looks haggard as he steps up to us. His wings are dragging on the floor, and he's propping himself up with one of the light stands he'd, we'd brought. Despite his exhaustion, he's grinning wildly. You two enjoy your first work experience? Oh, absolutely, Mr. Yotakon. I managed to load up both of the memory cards you gave to me, and I even managed to try out the different kinds of lenses you had brought. Good to hear, Ben. What about you, Inko? Well... If I'm being honest with you, it took a while for me it, for, for me, Mr. Yotakon. Well, I suppose it is a tough order to start with. So many things to account for, and... Ah, no, I meant that I didn't really get that many good shots till the end, Mr. Yotakon. I didn't even finish the first card you'd given me. I see. Well, when we go through the, these next week, I'm sure they'll be fine. Oh, definitely. The groom saunters up with a huge grin on his face, slinging an arm around our teacher's shoulders. Can't wait to see these. Yadakon straightens up and shrugs the arm off, turning to the newly m married man. <laughs> You'll see them when you see them. My team still needs to go through all the pictures and weed out the chaff. Ah, come on, T. Can't you give your buddy a preview or something? Yadakon sighs a bit. Hey, it's your special day. Ben, could you go fetch the laptop and card reader? Yes, sir. Inko, while he's doing that, can you start packing up everything into the trunk? Sure thing, Mr. Yadakon. Before I turn away to start, the tired, the tired Taro takes the camera from me. That's a creative way of doing alliteration, I guess. You can sit at that table over there. The two older men head off, leaving Ben and I to get started on packing everything up. While Ben and I are busy dismantling the multitude of standing flashes and lamps, the bridegroom and Mr. Yadakon sit at a cleaned up table with a laptop before them. I can't really make out what they're saying, but I can kind of tell based on the way the three switch between quietly focusing and laughing out loudly. Oh, <laughs> did I say laughing out loudly? By the time the back of the car is loaded up, the last of the wedding party has departed. Nothing left to do, Ben and I linger a bit behind the group. Yeah, these came out pretty dang great. Thanks again for... Hello, what's this? The laptop displays that last picture I took, somewhat unintentionally. He scans the photo with a critical eye. He nods and chuckles with approval. Okay, kid, good job. You should have print this one out for me, Trent. I'm gonna put it in my wallet. Sure, sure. Despite how lackluster his compliment is, I can't help but feel proud of my work. It's been a while since I've felt like this. Either way, it's not long before we climb into the car and begin our journey back to the school. I settle into the rhythmic motions of the car as it glides along the road. The cityscape of Volcaldera Bluffs passes by, and I can't help but admire it. We heard this one before, yeah. The mood is quickly killed, however, as Ben calls a certain red-scaled girl. Ah, Mia! The saccharine lovey-dovey talk makes my head hurt, and I can, I can guess by his expression that Yadakon feels the same way. He changes the subject by asking if my parents can pick me up. Looks like I'll be taking the late-night metro home. 
Still, I had fun today. Bring out my own phone, noticing the half dozen messages Olivia had sent while I was busy. Are you winning yet? Uh, better be. Guts bet me sunflowers. Some sunflowers sees that Ben would win. Guts is betting against me? What the fuck? I hate Guts. Well, there were more messages, that one in particular had me thinking. I mean, it wasn't a competition to begin with, but... There's also the fact that the groom hadn't complimented any of Ben's shots, so... Collect your winnings, Olivia! Yo, Gator! Good job, Agent. You deserve a reward for your hard work. Reward? What kind of? Oh. Oh my. Would she really? She knows that I'm with Ben and Yonakon. Get your mind out of the gutter. The interior of the car feels a few degrees warmer as I wait with bated breath. Inko, you okay? You're breathing pretty hard. Fine. Perfectly fine. Just, uh, carsick. I make sure there's absolutely no way anyone except me can view my screen. As extra protection, I dimmed the brightness of it to the point that only I'd be able to see a thing in the darkness of the car. Finally, Olivia's text comes through. I hold my breath before opening my eyes to see... Yo! I ah, shit. Uh, do I save this image? Hold on, I need to save this image first. Save! The last one was called Rat Bastard, so this one's gonna be called Rat Dastard. There we go. <laughs> Number one, big boy. Alright, I'm just gonna go grab my grub. I'll be right back. Back, we're back, we're back. Okay, got my grub. Number one big boy, that's me. Right. Loading image. Gator gif. Ooh. Make a bit more space. Mr. Yadakon, I think Inko's about to vomit. Not in here! In hindsight, I should have seen that coming, seeing as I'm in love with her and all. 
Damn my hormones. Well, I guess now he admits to himself he loves her. Even though we're pretty far into the fall season, today is a nice day out. There's something... There's a storm coming in later today with a cold front. So the temperature outside are bearable enough to relax in. One last respite before the unforgiving cold of winter settles in. I decided to celebrate by eating lunch outside. After a good bit of prodding, Olivia joined me. Inko, it's too cold. It'll freeze my veins solid. It's 17 degrees and you already agreed. Calm down. We step out in the chilled air. She pulls the drawstrings from her hoodie taut, yanking it shut again. When I tried moving her along, she starts dragging her tail on the ground. You're secretly enjoying this, aren't you? That hoodie isn't hiding your silly little grin. There's a table by the edge of the yard that looks pretty good. Now it's just the two of us, alone, sitting at a picnic table in complete silence. Ingenious one-liners flow through my head like a slam poetry champion, yet I can't work up the will to say anything about the wedding to her. Guess there's always later. So, Olivia... The gator lifts her head from her roast beef sandwich, staring directly at me. What's up? How about this weather? Ooh, you're gonna start with that? Seriously? Yeah, seriously, I'm not used to coastal towns, so this is a nice change of pace. Well, it's pretty chilly. Sorry, taking a bite out of my burger. Nom nom. Part of why we're the only ones out here. It is pretty empty out here today. Maybe it's like a human dino thing, more acclimated to snow. Yep, I'm eating a Borgar. Even with the hoodies, it's a lot colder than I'd like. Oh, why'd you agree to come outside? Come on outside with me. Well, you wanted to, and I... And you... Olivia's lips quiver a little as she tries to work out words to say. Her mouth isn't up to the task, as a flush of scarlet spreads across her cheeks and makes her pouting lips glow. Hey, stop looking at me like that. I mean, where are you from, then? The Midwest. Oh, that explains a lot. The Midwest? Only Illuins come from the Midwest. Oh, come on, that's not true. Alright, what was it like then? A lot of empty promises, nothing worth talking about. What was St. Hammond like before I showed up? Oh, horrible, everybody here sucked. Well, they still do, I guess, but seriously, most of the faculty had a stick up their ass, and the student body was holding on for dear life. I'd do anything to get out of this place. If I, if I got to take you and Damien with me. Wow. Colorful. Olivia and I freeze at the familiar voice. Oh, who is it? Oh. The sound of stone grinding on stone echoes through the courtyard as we turn our heads towards whoever said that. Principal Scaler stands just as still as us, her face burning red. Though her jaw is moving, teeth grinding exceptionally loud as she looks at Olivia. Next to her stands a large whale, dressed in formal attire. I guess Mr. Ferris is still doing that inspection. And did he hear? Oh. What were you saying just now about the student morale, Principal Scaler? <clears throat> Scaler. He doesn't even look up from his clipboard as he begins jotting down something with a pencil. I said had. Ever since Principal Scaler took over as our principal, things have gotten... better. Olivia's words do little to make Scaler's face lessen in both color intensity and heat. Grumpy Cat Mug? Is that Grumpy Cat? I mean, it's the right colors, but I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. To me, that just looks like a palico. Yeah, I have to say, the school's way better than my old one by at least a country mile. 
So, Mr. Oh, so, Mr. Inko, uh, fuck, what was my voice for him again? So, Mr. Inko, would you stay- Would you say that your time in St. Hammond, since your transfer has been both fruitful and comfortable? I mean, compared to my old school, I've met good friends, have had an excellent teachers and classes, and I've had an all-around good time. Also, the cafeteria food is great here. It actually tastes like food and not microwave reheated gruel. Mr. Ferris gives me a nod and writes something else on his notepad before turning to face Olivia. What about you, uh, what about you Mrs. Olivia Halford, was it? Got any more comments regarding St. Hammond? Do be honest if you please. Olivia shoots me a quick glance before taking a deep breath. Well... The school needs more handicap access ramps. Also, the elevator in the main building is busted. Something, sometimes I get stuck for a few minutes. Also, also, our PE teacher steals hats from the students and hoards them in the equipment shed. I can almost feel the heat emanating from Principal Scaler's face as soon as Olivia finishes lodging her complaints. Wouldn't want to be around her after Ferris's very visit is over. For his part, Mr. Ferris only nods and writes more down on his clipboard before turning back to face Scaler, who does her best to turn her grimace into some kind of smile. Seems like there are some issues left over from the previous administration. Are you okay? Are you already taking care of correcting the issues Mrs. Halford has pointed out? Principal Scaler nervously clears her throat. <coughs> I've already sent in a request to the district to have the elevator looked at by the technician. Mr. Ferris nods and writes something else on his clipboard before clicking his pen and stuffing it in, in, in his uh, before stuffing it in his front suit pocket. I'll have to t talk to the superintendent about that request next time I'm at the office. What about this PE teacher Mrs. Olivia mentions? Oh, Mr. Coach Solly? Ferris raises an eyebrow. It's his legal lame. It... I know. He checks the page, then sighs a bit. Right. Ferris turns to face me. Well, that's enough about Miss Hint Hammond for the time being. Mr. Rinko, how would you say things are going for you, not just as a student, but also as a growing adult? Honestly, at the start of the year, I'd have told you things weren't looking too good. But I've met some really good friends here at St. Hammond, and I feel like things will be okay for us. I can't help but look towards Olivia as I say that. She stares back at a faint expression of surprise, but it quickly melts away into a warm smile. Yeah, that sums it up pretty well. Ferris looks up from his clipboard towards us, a smirk forming on his otherwise flat face. I'm glad to hear you two are doing well. Leviathan finishes jot jotting down something on his clipboard, finally turning to Principal Scaler. I think I have everything I need for the time being. So, Mr. Ferris, why don't we adjourn the fac to the faculty lounge? Of course, we can go over your future budgetary plans over a nice cup of coffee. The inspector turns away, Principal Scaler lagging behind with him with a look of pure misery on her face. I wish she'd done this freshman year. With a huff and a frown, Olivia stabs at her lunch tray, treating her, her Caesar salad like a voodoo doll. Well, look on the bright side. She levels her silver eyes on me, but remains focused on treating her salad like its namesake. Haha! <laughs> oh, I get it, Caesar. Ah, uh, that's pretty clever. That's some clever writing right there. It's senior year, and we're about halfway through. So we have to put up with this place for a couple more months. She glances at the largest piece of chicken, twisting her spork, her spork roughly. And? Then what? Then what? I guess, uh, huh. I don't really have any concrete plans for after school. What do you mean? You mentioned all that stuff about making a name for yourself. I mean, yeah, when I first got here, that was the goal. But honestly, I haven't considered what I was going to do to get there. It's my turn to toy with my meal. You? Oh, did I miss something? No. I plan on getting an art degree. Whoa, really? Online, of course. 
Oh. Not like I have any other options. The only time I'm worth anything is when there's a brush in my hand. Only classes I'm really passing, too. I nod my head in understanding, but... She's talking about her future, but it sounds more like resignation than a declaration. I at least have something, even if the path to my gold is vague. The morose mood leaves me at a loss for words. Damn it, I was hoping to actually use this time to... I don't know. I want to talk to Olivia and, uh... Ask her something. <coughs> or something like that. Stupid Mr. Ferris and his workplace politics dampening the mood. Stupid sexy flounders. The idea between us is awkward. Uh, the air between us is awkward as we pick out our lunch. And even after the bell rings and we're forced to finish eating, it's still weird. Even when I ask Olivia, even if I ask, even, uh, even when I ask if Olivia would like a push to history, she just remains silent in thought. Olivia has been quiet for about five minutes now. Even though five minutes isn't that long a time, Olivia had grown so much chattier as of late, so the sounds felt a bit off-putting to me. Part of me couldn't help but wonder if it's a cold shoulder directed at me, or just remaining nervous from that last conversation. No use just thinking about it. So, Penny for your thoughts, Olivia? Hmm. Oh, right. Sorry, I guess I'm not here right now. What were you thinking about exactly? Olivia lets out a sigh and turns her head upwards so that her eyes meet mine. I really gotta think about what we were talking about earlier. How it seems like neither one of us knows what we'll be exactly doing after school's over. Oh, right. Yeah, that. I hadn't really given much thought to the fact that I had essentially dropped the bombshell on both of us. Now that I'll really stop to think about it though, the idea that neither of us really knows what to do after graduation is concerning. Most seniors at least have a small idea of what they'll want to do after graduation. At least, I think. I think you'd be surprised how many people don't have an idea what they want to do with their life. Hell, Liz made a full chart and timeline for herself. I mean, I always figured I'd go to college, but that feels so basic, for a lack of better word. There should be some kind of grander plan on what to do with the next big step in life. University, a career, maybe even starting some kind of family, those are the kinds of plans that come to mind. They're all just simple platitudes at the end of the day, though. Is it even worth making plans? The more I think about it, the more likely it is that something stupid just comes out of left field and wrecks everything. If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans and all. So maybe all I can really do is live in the moment? I always hated that sort of thinking. Just be a sitting duck for life to take fuck pot shots at me? Just live pretending death can't show up and take me at any time? Hey, it's Olivia. And friend. Olivia stiffens in her chair. Oh, hey, Mia. Olivia's words are a hiss as she tries to face away from the crimson-scaled girl. Her hands shakily strain against the wheels of her chair, slowly turning it too. Got a couple of questions to ask you, Olivia. Would you like to humor me for a bit? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't mind. Whoa! The parasaur saunters up and with the sway of her hips pushes me aside as she takes Olivia's reins from me. What the hell? You're insane if you think we're going to hit- if we're going with you anywhere. We? She looks down to Olivia and back at me. We? He's funny. We're just going for a little girl talk. No boys allowed, sorry. You're up for that, right, Liv? She puts a hand on her shoulder and cocks an eyebrow back at me like she knows something. So, yeah, we'll just be a moment. Don't worry, that pretty little head of yours. I'm left gawking and confused as the two head off in, into another direction. Livy doesn't seem to know what to say or do either, so she just goes along with the parasaur wheeling her away. A part of me wants to give chase, but the side eye that Mia sends back at me forces me to stop. I feel useless as I watch the two turn the corner. My thoughts of what I want to do, going after the pair, are betrayed by my, my body still frozen by the icy glare from Mia. 
damn it. I'll just get to class and ask what this was all about later. By the time I get to Brockling's history class, I'm half expecting to find Olivia already waiting for me. Some kind of remark prime that ready to, to be spoken to me. I just fucking- I just now noticed that she looks like Mrs. Pauling from Team Fortress. Jesus Christ. Did it take me that long to realize that? But instead, she isn't there. I, reluct I reluctantly takes my seat, tapping my foot impatiently. Even when the bell comes and goes, there's still no sign of her. Shit. I shouldn't have let Olivia go with her alone. What the hell was I thinking? I really don't want to cut class, but I can't afford anything bad happening to her. <laughs> nope, I can't sit and do nothing. I shoot my hand up into the air, causing Miss Prockling to pause mid-lecture. Yes, Mr. Nito? Mrs. Prockling, can I please be excused? Why? Class barely started a few minutes ago. Because I... Shat myself. <laughs> Hmm, he seems to be sitting slightly forward on his chair. Fuck. <laughs> I'm halfway out the door already. Where did they go? There's not a soul to be found anywhere. If I were a bitch, where would I harass somebody in secret? Shoot, whatever's between them, I hope it isn't turning physical. I mean, she wouldn't, would she? My hands clench tighter and tighter as I focus on walking faster. Finally, something snaps out of my trance. The faint sound of squeaking metal. I've heard that sound before. The elevator. Oh, never mind. I turn towards the source just beyond the door of a nearby classroom. Judging by the paraphernalia covering the door, I think it's the algebra room. I grab the handle and haphazardly throw the door open, praying that I'm not about to rudely interrupt a teacher for the second time today. Shogun from, uh, um, what was it, um, Chaos Head? It looks like shit, how am I, it should be happy it's done. Two heads turn to me in a mix of anger and surprise. And they're the heads of the girls I was looking for. It's like a sudden three-way three standoff. I was definitely not intended to be a factor in whatever this is. I really should have thought about that before barging in. Thank Raptor Jesus, she's okay. What the fuck are you doing here? I should ask you two the same question. Oh my, look, Baldy, now's not the time. Don't talk to him like that. Yeah, or what? I told you not to be followed. You were there when we left. He just heard you screaming like a maniac. I've been forgotten already. <laughs> hey. Why are you two in an empty classroom yelling at each other? The two fall definitely, deafeningly silent, unwilling or unable to speak. I notice a piece of paper in Mia's hand. It looks like something's drawn on it. The style is different, but it's unmistakably one of Olivia's works. Mia, why do you have her drawing? The Parasaur stops blinking for a few seconds before shoving the paper in her jacket. Before I can question it any further, Olivia speaks up. Inko, why did you come here? You seem like you were in trouble? How touching. Well, we are- we're all in trouble now. We? Uh, yeah, dumbass? I don't have time for this, Hot Wheels. Fill him in. What's the big issue? Olivia Clark's at her armrests again. She looks ready to cry. Hey, where'd all your vicious, vicious bravado go? <gasps> Are you afraid to tell him? Afraid of what he'll think? Sh shut up! 
precious. Fine, I'll say it. Mia turns to me with a malicious grin. I know about what this prick did during the yearbook art contest. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't give two shits. But then it hit me. Holy shit, she can just get away with it. And now, how crazy is that? She pauses, goading me to say otherwise, but I bite my tongue. Like a shark smelling blood, she starts to circle me, continuing her taunts. Then one thing leads to another, and now we're helping each other out. After all, if the school found out it'd leave a permanent mark on her unemployable ass. What? Yours too, probably, since you're involved in all. My teeth creak painfully from my clenched jaw, and yet the blood drained from my face. I'm talking about a record, you mouth breather. Art's her big break, right? Skipping the whole rig rigmarole, the gist, is simp the gist of it's simple. So Olivia draws up some BS group projects for me and some friends of mine, turns them in, and I make sure the whole incident goes away. I manage to earn back some of the feeling in my consciousness. Just long enough to defy her. But... That's blackmail and cheating, that's wrong. Oh my god, that's fucking precious. Mia blinks a few times before turning back to look at Olivia, then back to me, and then back to Olivia. What, are you disappointed in her now? I bet you made her pinky swear she would never do anything like that again. She leans closer to me, faux whispering. Well, sorry to break the news, Inko, but your friend here is a liar. Don't listen, I wouldn't be... She was threatening me. Pfft, threatening? Honey, if we were swapped, you'd see my ass hang. All I'm doing is making things better for the both of us. Not my fault you tried to get away with cheating. You'd think a cripple like you would have more shame than that. I watch Olivia's eyes start twitching. Mia's really starting to get to her. I can't let her keep talking to her like that. Mia, just stop it, okay? She really doesn't need this right now. Can't you both just walk away and pretend this never happened? Shit, Inko, you're good! <laughs> you hear that, Olivia? Wait, but I didn't mean... Olivia is staring at me with a look of betrayal that threatens to tear my heart in two. God damn it, why can't I stop talking for once? Mia waves me off, turning to face her target once more. I bet you'd love to walk away from this, but things just don't work out that way, do they? Oh, that's why you didn't want to inco knowing you're still a dirty cheater. Shut up! Oh, relax, that's not a big deal. No, I'm sick of this. You already admitted it. Art's my big break. You're only doing this because art is all I have. Your record is fucked. You lose nothing if you get caught. It's too safe for you. But me, it's all I have. You're embarrassing yourself. You know I can't lift or run and carry or dance or fucking anything you do on a daily basis without even thinking about? I can't ever do anything else because of these fucking legs and this fucking chair. Why can't any of you just leave me alone? I just want to draw for God's sake. Mia rolls her eyes and takes a step closer to Olivia. That's a nice outburst and all, sweetie, but I really thought you were smarter than this. Olivia wipes away at her tears on their sleeve. What? Mia takes another step forward. Think, handbag. Would I really go through the trouble of making you do this junk for middling grades? If you work if your work were crap, you wouldn't have a record to hold over you. Everyone knows you're the best artist in this place. You're just a retard about it. Olivia's mouth hangs open, but no words come out. You're the kind of idiot to let this sort of comment get to you, so let me be the first to say. Congratulations, Olivia. You have a fan. Anyways, Inko. Oh crap. Distractions aside, you're in on it now too. You don't want Olivia to starve now, would you? Her words, not mine. Say a damn word about any of this and she's doomed. Do you understand me? I try to muster up words of defiance, but just past Mia's stare of death, I spot Olivia's horrified expression. 
Hello, Baldy. I'm waiting for your answer, Skinny. I honestly don't know what to say or do in this situation. Can't believe she called us a skinny. What the hell? N no. Excuse me? Yep, the word was said out loud this time. Uh, let me think this over with Olivia. Think this over? You dense or something? This is a simple yes or no question. You can't seriously freaking. Mia pinches the bridge of her snoot and lets out a tired sigh. Snoot mentioned, snoot mentioned. Fine. The two of you talk you two of you talk it over and reach some kind of resolution. But that don't change the fact of what I said earlier, Inka. Don't say I don't do nothing nice. But think carefully, amigo. You both got a hell of a lot more to lose than I do. Mia only gives me and Olivia one final glance before unceremoniously leaving the room. It takes me a bit to recover my thoughts. I never thought Mia would go this far. And Olivia right now, she must be. I stand up from the floor, slowly approaching the alligator. She looks like a mess. Why? Why did you have to come in here? I I'm sorry, I was just so worried about what Mia could have been doing to you and I wanted to make sure you were alright. Olivia grips her armrests. I was alright, and I had it handled with Mia. But to basically be her slave, doing all of her work? Not all of it, just whatever she needs to pass. I'll take the seat next to her there. She threatened me that she'd go to Scalar and spill everything. And if Scalar knew that I'd swapped the art, she'd know that it was with you. I couldn't let her do that to us, so I got desperate. Told her I had to do anything she wanted. That's how I got mixed up with her. I let out a deep and heavy sigh. Olivia, I can understand why, but... I heard how Mia was treating you before I came in. Even when you're doing her work to save her skin, she's still treating you... She's still treating your art, and more importantly, you, like garbage. My words whip through her, the gator girl's fragile heart, her face contorting in a fierce snarl even as her eyes grow wet. You're miserable. You know that. Olivia looks away from me, her face scrunching up as tears well in her eyes. I just... I don't know what to do. And I don't even know I, I, I can trust her to keep her word. And now that you know what's going on, Mia has a noose around both our necks. The gravity of the situation settles in. It feels like something in me is both frozen and ablaze. There's only six months left in this semester. It's not like she's asking for something impossible. Her eyes regain some fire as she smiles. I'll just have to tough it out. Keep making art to shut her up until this whole stupid thing can blow over. She's been going through this for so long and she's still... That's just... I'm out of options and so is she. I just blurt out the first thing that comes to mind. Why not tell Scalar about what Mia's making you do? Scalar? Are you out of your mind? You saw how she handles things around here. Especially with that auditor breathing down her neck. I'm trying to avoid getting caught. Right. Okay, okay. Yadakon? For a split second, I see her mask crack, her real worry evident in those silver eyes shaking. No. Olivia makes a show of clearing her throat. Mr. Yadakon doesn't need to hear this either. You know he'd be able to. I can't do this on my own. Her balled up fists quake wildly after they slam into our armrests, and the gator girl does her best to hide her wince. I really don't think we can fix this if we're not working together. There's nothing to fix. I told you, I have it under control. Just please, Inko, I need you to trust me on this. Don't ruin this for me. I do trust you. Your voice is softening, as if she's been fully drained now. I can handle it, I told you. Her fists unfurl and continue shaking. 
I take one of her hands, ignoring her indignant sputters as I delicately cradle it in my palm. Her protests die down in a, into a pained whine when my thumb ever so slightly presses down on a joint. All this time, you've been doing your best, Olivia. My soft words draw out an even softer breath from her. Mia's had me drawing for her group almost daily. It must hurt a lot after so long. Maybe it does. But it's the thing I can't work through. Why can't you trust me to help then? It's not that I don't trust you, Inko. It's that I did trust everyone else. So please, stop asking about fixing me. Or fixing things, I mean. Is that what this is about? Olivia's burning out at this point. She's already hurt badly, I can feel her hand still shaking. It's beyond the point that either of us alone can handle. I let go of Olivia's hand, watching as she takes back her hand and settles it against her chest. I hook a nearby chair leg with my foot and drag the seat closer. Close enough that I can sit down right next to the Baryonyx. Inko? I find that being next to her like this makes it easier for what I'm about to say. Breathe in, breathe out. Meeting her eyes once again, I speak my honest thoughts. Mr. Yadakon can help, Olivia. Her teeth grind together as though contemplating mauling my face off. Please, hear me out. I I want to trust you, Inko, but I'm just scared that Yadakon will hate me forever for this. He's the only one that's ever made me feel like my art is worth something. I can't lose him. Look, we can get you out of this. Of course Yadakon will understand, even go to bat for you. But if you're the one to speak up, it means you're going you're the one getting back at Mia. She won't have power over you. I... I can't give it all up like this. How can I trust you with my entire future? You have nothing to lose, I have everything. Can you trust Yadakon? Will he really just let that happen? Mia has no reason to not throw you under the bus. Does he? She, I mean. Or right, does he? Or does- Oh, okay, he's again now. Does he? Of course not. Mr. Yadakon is... He's the only teacher that's never given up on me. I'm here with you too. You're not alone, Olivia. But you need to accept our help. Please. Olivia looks down at- at me, Olivia, Olivia looks me in the eyes for a few seconds before sharply snapping her face downward. Her body then begins to quiver, almost as if she trembles with a mixture of cold and fear. Olivia. I get up from my chair and reach out to grasp her shoulder and try to comfort her somewhat. It's okay, I'm here for you. Olivia's shaking lessons giving me hope that my words were starting to reach her. But not two seconds after those thoughts cross through my mind, Olivia's shaking resumes once again. The shaking is followed by sniffling, at which point I notice tears rolling down Olivia's snout and falling right into her lap. Olive. Before I can finish my words, Olivia lunges forward and wraps her arms around my abdomen, bringing me forward and burying her face into my stomach. At which point I as she begins to let out what I can only describe as a pain-filled well. At first, I'm left utterly frozen in place, hands raised and her eyes wide. Nothing in my life has ever prepared me for a situation such as this. No, Inko, you know what to do. Did he win? I don't know. I place my other hand on Olivia's other shoulder and slowly take a single knee, bringing me to eye level with her. Then, without saying a word, I tighten my embrace, allowing her arms to wrap around my neck as I wrap my arms, her arms around hers. My waist is pulled closer too, by her bow like tail that's becoming an impromptu belt harnessing me to the gator girl. There's a distinct thumping on my chest, rhythmic and relaxing. The realization that it's her heart sets my face ablaze, but also brings a smile to my lips. 
And I closed my eyes and let myself become lost in the warmth of Olivia's embrace. When we break apart, I check on our time limit. My phone says there's still 20 minutes before school's out. Hopefully Yotacon has a free period right now. You ready? Olivia gives a small nod. I get up and start toward the door. The door held open with the back of my shoe, I look back at her. As Olivia wheels over, she grunts with each push. Oh crap, I'm an idiot. When she reaches me, Olivia gives me a very meaningful look. Though I don't really get her its intent till her tail wraps around my wrist. Oh, right. Taking Olivia's reins for her, we start towards our art teacher's room in companionable fast silence. Man, I can't wait to just go home and relax. Maybe open a bag of chips. Olivia's tremoring has fallen onto a 2 on the Richter scale, so that's nice. She's seen enough Mia to last a while. Then again, so have I. She'd probably kill us if she saw us sneaking out. Off. We're near the end of it all. It's nearly over. The first bit of quiet that we get, just the sounds of us, of, uh, of Olivia and I walking through the halls. Olivia's gripping my wrist pretty hard. I guess she's still pretty tense. Say, maybe there's a massage place around here. That'd be pretty nice, nice right now. Wait a second. Just the sounds of Olivia and I walking through the halls? Something ancient awakens in me. An icy chill races down my spine as if there's a knife poised just behind my neck. The gator girl tenses, head stiffly turning. Her pupils slowly shift to mine, and their contraction to pinpoints bring attention to the danger my ancestral instincts are warning me of. Sup? You two trying to run a... Fight or flight reflexes kick in. Zero thought in my end, my body chose to just book it. Animation time! Voice acting! Oh god, fucking run! <laughs> For a moment, I wonder if the deafening noise of the metal doors being hit is from Mia punching it in rage or accidentally slamming it into a chasing after us. Damn, they really went all out with the animations, huh? Whoops. When I catch you, I will eviscerate you and every last thing you love! Fuck! The elevator finally begins its descent to out downwards. I exhale deeply, Olivia gasps for breath. My arm stings from Olivia's razored grip. Good thing I have a jacket, her claws have shredded the sleeve. I think I may have even drawn blood. I shake my arm a bit, and Olivia retracts her hands apologetically. Sorry, sorry. Oh god, are you okay? No, no I'm not. What happens when we reach the bottom? Neil will be waiting for us. Olivia removes the key from its slot. It won't open. Just don't make any noise. The elevator reaches the bottom. Just as Olivia said, without the key, the outmoded chambers simply power down. Silence. There's a small gap under the door letting light in. There's nobody there. We sit in the dark, empty cabin for what feels like minutes. I'm pressed close to Olivia while we waited out. I can feel her tail wrap around my ankle, which thankfully won't rip my clothing apart. The phrase, seven minutes in heaven, surfaces in my mind as, and is buried immediately. It's a bit warm in here. Shh. Heavy, rapid footsteps zone in on us, accompanied by the sound of ripping paper. Mia's destroying everything on the walls. You fuckers had better still be in there! 
If you cowards run away, so help me, Raptor Jesus. She's right in front of the door. I hear her heavy breathing and soft thuds as she attempts to put her ear to the door a few times. I try to stay as silent as possible, but I'm afraid that the homicidal parasaur can hear my heart hammering in my chest and pants crapping horror. Mia, with no intention to vent her frustrations verbally, resorts to the next best thing. Physical therapy. We're surrounded by the sounds of ripping paper, dented lockers, and drywall fracturing. On occasions, something hits the elevator door again. Olivia and I don't dare move. I hear other voices. Mia's drawn attention to herself. Who the fuck are you looking at? Do you want one less horn? Find someone, quick. I fucking swear I've had it with that fucking luggage case on wheels. Good luck painting when you're eating through straw, bitch legs, coconut. Olivia takes a sharp breath. Silence. What was that sound? Did she get fucking tased? Sounds like a series of sharp cracks. Hey, whoa, hey, hey, it's all cool. It's not what it looks like, it's, uh... Rapid footsteps echo from down the hall. Is she gone? What the fuck could have scared Mia like that? There's a light knock on the elevator door. Hey, anyone in there? Sounds like- It sounds exhausted, but it's definitely Yotacon. By now, my eyes have adjusted to the light. Olivia's relief is palpable and shared, my body finally relaxing and practically melting away the wall of the tiny elevator. We're gonna have to tell Yotacon. It's safe to come out. It's all clear. Well, it looks like a stick of dynamite went off out here, but otherwise it's fine. I look at Olivia, who stares at the key in her hand. She moves to unlock the elevator, but hesitates. I don't think- I don't think- I don't think Yonakon tased her yet. I think he was just threatening to tase her. I think our teacher's about able to sense it, since his tired voice carries the weight of his worry. Everything will be okay, I promise. But she doesn't put it in, she just stares. You don't know that. Olivia whispers softly, I can barely make it out. God, please. Putting that key in and opening up means telling Yadakon everything. There's no way Mia's letting this slide. Nothing's a safe bet. Nothing could be said for sure. She can't do nothing and she can't do anything either. So she looks to me. As if I'd have an answer. The key is offered to me, delicately held between two of her claws. Alright. We're doing this. Alright, let's get this over with. We've gotten this far, time to end it. I've had about enough of all this stress. And by the looks of it, so has Olivia. She's been dealing with this much longer than me, so it's time for me to carry my own weight here. It's the least I can do to take that final step for her. Even if she doesn't trust the Otacon, she trusts me. She doesn't trust the Otacon? That doesn't sound right. But it can't be anything else, it's just that. Enough nonsense. I take the key and moves to slide the key in the panel. With the key inserted and twisted, the dark room shudders briefly before the metal door finally starts to slide open. We're greeted by the sight of our teacher, looking very haggard, his brow slick with sweat and holding on some strange black rod. Oh, it's a stun baton. Olivia reels back at the sight of the odd baton. Thanks for saving us, Mr. Yotacon. Don't thank me just yet. I'm gonna need an explanation for all this. So is Principal Scaler, for that matter. He steps aside and motions us out of the elevator with a wave of the broad stick. Come along now. Give me the janitors some time to take care of this mess. Holy shit, it looks like Mia tried to destroy everything within her reach in the hallway. On the ceiling, a pipe is leaking water intended for fountains and toilets. A group of dinos in overalls around the corner, looking absolutely pissed. Our teacher waves at them and begins escorting us to his room. All the adrenaline has faded now, and I can feel the acute pain in my arm. Livia's hand reaches back behind her head to the arm she had grabbed, and her fingers delicately loop around the spot. 
She looks back, her mouth shut tight, but her sympathetic eyes telling me she's sorry. I nod back with a comforting smile. Sure, it hurt, but I knew she didn't mean it. We look forward again to the door of Yotacon's classroom. Olivia sighed and resigned herself to explaining everything to her teacher. I'm slitting my burgar. Olivia looked ready to collapse. She had taken the better part of an hour explaining to Mia's extortion in full detail to Mr. Yadakan. I grab Olivia's canteen and hand it to her. She grittily chugs the entire thing, gasping after and rubbing her sore throat. It was hard to get a read on what our teacher was thinking. His brow was furrowed, his fingers steepled, and he was muttering to himself. Finally, with a deep sigh, he stands from his desk and looks at the exhausted girl. I've had a feeling something was going on, but to this extent... Should have come forward sooner. I know, but, here, but we're here now, aren't we? Fair point. Still, I'm concerned that you thought nobody would notice. I didn't think anybody would care to look. Those assignments go through dozens of eyes, you know. What do you mean? Your style, Olivia. I saw it from a mile away and I was just waiting for you to talk to me. You knew? Why didn't you say anything? I wanted it to come from you. Don't worry, I'm not going to lecture you. Raptor Jesus knows you've had enough of that already. You two did, you two did well for yourselves, though. I'm proud of that. All we did was run away from Mia. Mr. Yadakon sighs, but not long after, he gently smiles at us. What matters is that you two found strength in each other and reached out for help. With what we have on Mia now, we can justify watching her like a hawk from here on. Anybody else she was harassing ought to thank you. Are you sure she's actually going to get in trouble for this? At this point, we'd look bad if we didn't punish Mia for this kind of behavior. That's a relief. Come on, you two can hunker here until the school class clears out. You sure? You're going to stay after like, like always anyways, right? Yeah. What? The loud noise makes me stumble to the floor. Mr. Yadakon! Whoops. Yadakon looks at the device in his hand. Is that a taser? There's a piece of tape on it with something written on it. Estrus Protocol? Anyway, I'm going to run and get some things. They're going to want my account on paper pretty soon. May as well knock it out of the way. With no care at all, Mr. Yadakon chucks the electric weapon into his desk before turning into his doorway. Don't burn the place down, alright? Alone, I go sit near the back of the classroom. Looking out the window, I finally let out a huge sigh I'd been holding in. Olivia rolls over to join me, and surprisingly, she's smiling. You were right, Inko. Hmm? I could trust him. We sit in silence, just looking out the window. When school is let out, we watch the crowd of students going home. I don't see Mia in the crowd, but that doesn't matter. I think despite it all, Olivia's life is going to be just a bit easier after, to after today. While students trickle out of the school, Olivia took the chance to unwind. I figured it'd be best to let her rest, as I saw her drooping eyelids finally shut. She looked... cute. Just napping idly in her wheelchair? Except for the weird bellowing. It was like a snore, except I could feel it vibrating through the floor. Ooh, that's a pretty loud snore, huh? With the clouds hiding the sun and the classroom's light turned off, I could do with some shut-eye too. 
but I can't bring my eyes closed. Instead, I look out the window. The layer of clouds overhead steadily grows more dense, casting a darker shade on everything. Light raindrops prick against the glass. Crap, I really should have brought my umbrella. As a few minutes go by, they roll in closer and closer, blocking out the sunlight. If Olivia were awake, she'd think this was pretty neat. I look back to her. Maybe I could nap too. Just a little. Flashbang? What was- oh. My eyes are drawn upward to the heavy clouds in the sky. In moments, the glass of the window is assailed by numerous heavy droplets of rain. Holy moly. The trees outside are billowing almost aggressively. Several small branches are stripped away in the torrential downpour. An umbrella wouldn't help with this. Huh? Mm, what? My phone's blaring an alarm. So is Olivia's. Instructions to shelter in place for several hours. The classroom door is thrust open quickly. Yanakon is back, panting hard and clothes drenched. That's such a good face. I love that face. He takes our moment of surprise to compose himself as best he can. <coughs> Sorry about that, the faculty is doing a sweep of the campus right now. Apparently there's a monsoon scare right now. Monsoon? Does that happen here? Yadakon gestures to his drenched outfit and out the window as if to ask if Mia had clocked me in the head after all. Right. Are we going to be alright? Oh, of course. Schools are designed shelters- are designated shelters for the worst disasters. If anything, you're safer here than at home. But the hallway outside is open, isn't it? I just finished putting the cover up. A cover? Just keep close to the wall, yeah? What do we do now? Yadakon shakes his phone at us. Shelter in place. We're all stuck here for a few hours. Olivia reaches into her bag and puts out, pulls out her drawing book and a well-used pencil. Actually, why don't you use this time to catch up on some schoolwork? I'm sure you have some work from other classes still pending, and I can't think of a better time to tackle that than now. But today's been rough. Can't I do this or finish my nap instead? That's fine too, but aren't you falling behind grade-wise in some of your other classes? Maybe... Ugh, fine. I'll catch up on some of that work. Yadakan gets a single nod and smiles. Olivia puts away her drawing materials and instead pulls out her bulky mathematics book, which she sets on the table with more force than necessary, followed by her notebook. With some hesitation on her part, Olivia sets herself to work. Meanwhile, I bring myself closer to her in case she wants some help with the work. After a few minutes, it's clear her mind and spirit isn't in the work isn't into the work one bit. She constantly fidgets, taps her pen on the table, and looks around the room and out the window. Eventually, she lets out a groan and slams her book shut. Ugh, it sucks! Can I please do something else? Yadakon, who had been busying himself with grading some paperwork, snaps up away from his work, looking at Olivia with, while rubbing his chin. Well, there is one thing you can help out with. Would need both of your help with it. Could even consider it a few ex a new extra assignments. What do you say? I don't know. That's pretty rough on Olivia. Absolutely, I'll do it. All right. Wonderful. It's back here. He starts walking to the back of the room and waves the two of us to follow him. Whoa! Something in the dark room? Oh man! I thought we wouldn't get to do anything in there until the last few weeks of the semester. Are you going to be getting a head start on this new section? Oh, maybe we'll be making prints or learn something about C41 and... Huh? Oh, Olivia's poking my back. Quit it with the cinematic gate. You're going too slow. Whoops. I shake the excitement off and head into the dark room. Yadakon holds the door open for the two of us to enter. 
The inside grows a vibrant crimson light. Yadakon's suit appears to light up with <laughs> in the red lights, as does my shirt. I've only actually been in a dark room once before. This is so cool. I clasp my hands together. So, what are we developing? We? This is an important job just for you. Alright, I'm ready for it. What am I developing? Your lower back. Oh, it's a workshop. There's a click on a switch, and the red lights switch to normal lights and properly illuminate the room. There's boxes over there. I need one at, at each station around the room, but they're too heavy for me. <laughs> if you can't, of course. Legally, I can't make you do any of this. Do, do I at least get extra credit? You get one of the bags of chips I keep hidden in my desk. Fine. Nice! Come on, Olivia, we should clear the way for him. There actually is something in the box we'll need in a bit. The two move back to the entrance, and I'm faced with the myriad boxes I'll need have to carry. Looks like there's about ten. They're pretty medium-sized, like you could fit table lamp in them. How heavy can they... <coughs> <coughs> Lift with your knees, Inko! Very true, you don't want to break your back. This is gonna suck. I look at Olivia, and she already has her phone out and pointed my way. Damn it. I shift my legs and try again. <laughs> oh. I actually managed to get this thing off the ground. Oh, sorry, I started hicc hicc hiccuping there. This must have, must have bre uh, breathed in wrong. This must weigh at least 70 pounds. What are these loaded with? Bricks? Something like that. Careful, they're fragile. Finally, I get the last box in its place. I pick a chair and collapse in a heap. My muscles are on fire. Though to be honest, I don't know if I could have done all that at the beginning of the year. Guess I'm getting stronger. Yadakon walks back into the dark room with a small black toolbox. Oh, good, you're done. Come on out and take a breather. That looked tough. I'd rather stay here. <laughs> Olivia shows up in the doorway beyond, behind Yadakon. I'm surprised you didn't use the dolly. You had a dolly? What dolly? Oh my god, they had a dolly. Before you get started with me, Inko, you didn't ask. For the love of- I hate you! That's the spirit! <laughs> Olivia stifles her laughter with a snickering snort fest. Your mood will improve when you see just what you've been carrying. Oh? He grabs a box cutter from a shelf and slices the top of one open. Our teacher pulls out what looks like a, a large overhead lamp from the box. Oh. Oh, sweet! So that means that you'll be making your own prints for midterms. That sounds awesome. Oh man, I can't wait to. But before any of that, these need to be assembled. The rest of the parts are taken from the first box and set down meticulously. Lena's gotten curious as so she's rolled up to the station and handling one of the funnier looking pieces. Anywho, here you two go. Wait, two? Yes, too. Don't think I didn't notice you watching Inko so much. The stammered denial from Olivia does nothing to wipe the cheeky grin from our teacher's face. The gator blush is so cute. But what about you, Mr. Yadakon? I'll be right back. He makes his way to the door again. Get started without me. I need to go fetch some things. Before either Olivia or I can speak up, he's left the room. Olivia already has the toolbox open on her lap. Right then. I grab the folded up instructions and lay it out, seeing the details of the bizarre device fully assembled. Okay, so... Thunk. Step one. Uh, hand me the next piece. Oh, did I scare you? Yes, you scared me! These things are heavy, what if you drop that on something? I didn't, though. But you could've. And I didn't. Olivia's tail reaches for some brackets, but I grab the limb before she can take them. 
Hold on, we gotta do things right or the enlarger might not work right. She retracts her tail from the table. You're no fun, it's just an oversized lamp. That's a gross over oversimplification. You're a gross oversimplification. Katakan's gonna make you use the, the one you break. Just means I can sketch more, right? Well, it'd mean you can't participate and learn about photography. Photography's your thing, so it doesn't really apply much to me, does it? Well, maybe that's the case for you, but the photography's my thing. It's the whole reason I took this class, after all. Oh, sorry. It's nothing. Olivia politely rests her hand in her laps. Her eyes linger on the box of parts. Well... Uh, how does... Uh, how does it work, then? The print enlarger? She shakes her head. Photography? Like, why the giant lab thing? It's all digital today, right? Huh. I think that's the first time someone's actually asked me about it. Sure, I've had lots of mid-show or rehearsals, explaining my hobbies and their cultural significance to others, but none of that's coming to me right now. It's all about shot composition, and this machine is part of the production of it. Getting the right things in the right places at the right time to evoke a certain feeling. Composition is a thing in paintings too, you know. I'm ill-prepared for Olivia's comeback. Yeah, but it's a lot easier to pick the composition you want. You don't have to worry about any factors other than yourself. With photography, you have to build the set- You have to build the set to get a good photo. That's the fun of it. But why would you want to limit yourself like that? Why not just draw whatever you're taking the picture of instead? You can express all kinds of things you could never express with a photo. Olivia taps a claw on the imager, the metallic ping echoing in the small room. What sets all this junk apart from just lines on a page? Th the technique and vision! She smirks at my petulant comment. Fine, I'll show her. I'll prove to you that this takes skill. I hold the lighting portion up, making sure it's at the right angle and fasten the light's last portion of the enlarger in. I plug the machine in and flip the switch, happy that it works right and lights up the entire base. Olivia, Olivia looks at me with confusion as I move to the entrance of the room and flick the light switch, bathing the room in bright red again. Going back to our workspace, I pull the developed negatives from my backpack and slot the slide in, uh, the slide I want, into the carrier. And ta-da! The negative carrier in place in the machine, I blur a blurry gray blob is projected onto the base. Uh, what? Give me a minute. I hold the manual under the light to the side of the blob, checking which knob is which, and slowly turn them. As the lens and billows shift, the ro the worst how do you pronounce that? Rorskak? Rorschach? Rorskak? Rorskak? Test transforms, gaining one definition until it finally becomes the spitting image of the school's front entrance. I can even do this. I take out the negative and place another atop it before slotting the carrier back in while also increasing the strength of the light. The image displayed is now the entrance with a half dozen semi-transparent students in front of it. What did you do? I overlapped another shot. The backgrounds are the same and doubled up, so I have to intensify the light, otherwise the entrance would be too dim. Pfft, so? That would take me a few minutes to do tops. It'd look a lot better too. She smirks, but I think she's feigning her apathy this time. Her tail gives her away. It's a lot more technical, I guess, but I only knew how to do this kind of stuff from Mr. Yadakon's lectures about negatives. What else could you do with this thing? Hmm, I don't know, but... What's that sm- Oh, shit! I pull out the negative carrier and wince at how hot it is. Crap, crap, shit, shit! Olivia is quick to rip the plug off the socket from the socket. With my sleeve, I open up the carrier and see I've managed to melt the two negatives together. Oh fuck. Oh man, I was gonna use that. All that work and I go and I go and mess it up trying to prove something. Olivia's never gonna let me live this down. The green gator girl lays a sympathetic hand on my shoulder to my surprise. Hey, shit happens. I've ruined a lot of paintings in the past too, you know. She takes the rails from the warm metal plate and holds them up to the red light, trying to see through them. 
And you've got more shots on this thing. But I like those shots. Then go retake them. It's not that easy. Like, it has to be the exact same time and weather and... Ooh, powered out. Lighting? The abrupt darkness coincides with the vague ambient sound of the ventilation shuddering to a halt. Power outage. The blackness is all-encompassing. I can't even see Olivia, who I know is right next to me. I Inko? Her voice helps me confirm that we're still alive in some fashion. But there's a shakiness in her tone, which sends a tense rattle down my spine. Our breathing is the only noise. It's as if I'd, we'd been encapsulated in a void of nothingness. I'm still here. I know that. I plant my hand down on to brace her shout, feeling the still warm metal of the and larger base. But, uh... Yeah, I guess the school lost power. I feel something cover my hand. And then squeeze. Painfully. Ow, 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 ow. Sorry. The pressure lessens, but she doesn't let go of my fingers. No, it's fine. There's a subtle shake in the scaly limb in my hand, but when I brush my thumb across it, the limbs... Blah, blah, blah. When I brush across it, the limb eases. Hey, stop that. Stop what? Just, just that. Stop the thing you're doing with your hand. I shrug. And then want to slap my face when I realize she can't see that. Alright. Standing here in the darkness of the dark room isn't getting us anywhere. We should go find- Olivia? Inko? <laughs> ah! <laughs> my instincts kick in. I hop back to make a space between us and the killer. I turn my back to them to become a defensive wall. I wrap my arms around Olivia's head, make sure she's 100% protected. Hey, 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 it's me, Mr. Yotacon. I took a bit to find a flashlight, but with how this room is... I look up to the shining white pterodactyl, pointing the flashlight at his own face. Oh. Get off me, you git! Oof. Look, I'm not paying you two to get frisky in the closet. That's what Trigum's class is for, huh? You're not pay- we're not fr- <laughs> Mr. Yotacon holds up a pale hand, his grin widening. Relax, I'm just joking around. He leans against the doorway to get a better look inside the dark room with his flashlight. Powers out for the whole block, and apparently our backup generator is decades old and is only keeping the AC on. Someone should get fired for that. Come on, we can wait- I would, we, we can wait it out in the studio. Olivia follows me into the main classroom as we trill slowly into Mr. Yotacon's wake. The slow sounds of his gait sets a nice contrast to the rain lashing against the window. Whoa, it's really coming down outside. Think it'll flood? It floods here? Sometimes. The ground floor classrooms used to have carpet, you know. Oh. Yotacon starts pulling something out of his desk, but it's too dark to see what. Ugh, don't remind me. That junk has just sucked away half a year's funding. You ever try teaching people about watercolors without the frickin' watercolors? It was ridiculous. <laughs> I remember. I remember you were the most upset. Alright. He sets up some tiny tea lights down on the one of the desks and begins lighting them. The tiny wicks are set alight with the tiniest of embers, prov providing the bare minimum of illumination for us to see. Won't those trigger the fire alarms? We should be fine. They're too small by themselves. What are those for? Been saving them for a rainy day. Literally. We're gonna be stuck for a while, so why not make it a camp out? Camping. I like the sound of that. When we get in trouble, though, it'd be trespassing, right? It's either this or trying to get home in a storm. As if to illustrate this point, the weather decided to chime in. <laughs> Besides, schools are usually made with sheltering in mind. There's all kinds of procedures for this, like bringing everyone to the gym and breaking out some really moldy cots. Olivia winces. Those haven't been replaced. <laughs> Our budget has been in the red for years, Mrs. Halford. Part of why we're being scrutinized right now with that whole audit bit business. 
Anyway, we're the we're the only ones left on campus, so I'm not gonna go through all that trouble. So just relax for now. I've already called a taxi for the both of you. Taxi? I made the call as soon as the power went out. It's just gonna be a while to get one ready and send it out. What'll we do in the meantime? Our teacher has a wicked grin. You're not done with that homework, right? Haha, <laughs> ooh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Time and the storm carry on, yet things are surprisingly calm. Olivia pretends to focus on her work while I pretend to help her. But soon enough, Mr. Yadakon starts sharing wild stories about previous semesters. You know, a few years back, somebody tried to take his hat right off his head. Let me tell you, I've never seen a shovel fly that fast. That sounds appropriately violent. Either way, Olivia slowly loosens the facade of productivity, and I join her not long after. You know, I still owe you for ruining your once your one coat last year. Oh, forget about it. I have dozens of them in my closet anyway. You too? The eerie ambiance from the blackout is quickly overridden by our combined laughter. Eventually, we run out of things to say and just wait quietly in each other's company. Yadakon slumps downwards in his chair. Whew, long day today. He glances out the window, still being assaulted by sheets of rainwater outside. Normally, I'm home by now, resting. You do you mind if I relax a little here? No, go ahead. Hmm, thanks. It's just, he stretches behind them, cracking his spine against the groove of the chair. Olivia, I've been meaning to say. Hmm? You're usually so quiet, reserved, isolated even. I've noticed you're being a bit more friendly recently. Huh? You think so? You've been in my classes all four years, of course I would. Maybe I'm a bit old-fashioned, but it hurts me to see a student hurt themselves like that. When you're in the adult world, you'll see this all the time. Once someone's in a rut, they'll tend to just stay there until their days blend together instead of lifting themselves up. Like they got all the time in the world. So, I'm proud of you for making an effort, Olivia. Oh, Mr. Yadakon, I don't... Uh, I mean... Don't be flustered. Be proud, Olivia. You've managed to form a friendship. Of course, I appreciate you extending an olive branch too, Inko. Eh? It's no mis it's no problem, Mr. Yadakon. Come on, school hours are over. You can drop the mister. I mean, it's not something to be thanking me for, is it? I'm just her friend. That is great to hear, though. You can't always navigate this world alone. Someone to keep company can really help. He can? More than you can imagine. Yadakon leads forward to place a hand over both of ours. He just barely makes contact with Olivia's wrist, then she winces and yanks it back. Shit. Olivia? Are you alright? Oh, I'm fine. That just hurt. I was fine before, though. You've been trying to stay off that wrist all day. Was it that bad? It was feeling better. I even helped build those doohickeys. The print enlargers? He covers his eyes with one hand. Of course. Great move. Student's been overworking herself and I think to give her extra physical work. What am I doing? It, it wasn't your fault. I didn't want you to worry. I had no idea how bad it was. He leans forward again, gently holding Olivia's wrist, inspecting it and being careful not to cause any pain. You need to take care of yourself, Olivia. If someone, if something were to happen, I know you're, you'd be completely beside yourself. I know. I know you were doing extra work, but how did it even get this bad? It was a lot of extra work. Doing a whole group's assignments on top of my own. For the last three weeks, basically all my free time. It's great practice, at least that's what I was telling myself. Olivia does her best to hide her wincing as the teacher tests her arm. I never would have made it to graduation. All because of that painting you switched. He shakes his head and lets, Olivia, lets go of Olivia. No, it goes further than that. That painting is all because of the pain you've been going through all these years. All because of that first contest entry hanging in the gala. 
Your first venture into your art world and it went how it did. Livia looks down at her hand, stretching the fingers out and in, slowly, carefully. My hand moves without a thought, fingers taking her hand carefully to help in some way or another. You in that painting... A teacher palms his face and groans into it. It's a genuinely good piece, Olivia. I've told you that so many times. She locks up. But manages a small nod. What a horrible chain of events. I've had to witness it all these years. Watch as it's taken your friends, your self-worth. That little smile you had when you first came into my class. And now it's ruining your health. He gently lets go and covers his own eyes again. And I really just sat here and watched it. I was just talking about how people act like they have more time than they have. Yadakon? Are you alright? I'm super. I'm more than okay. In fact, I've made up my mind about something. You. Take her to the gala, please. There's something I want you two to see. It. No words, just do it, please. I nod. What are you gonna show us? He stops at the door. Something you should have seen a long time ago. My shoes slosh noisily through the flooded hallways as we clo as we slowly head back to the main building of the school. Uh, I guess they did flood. Olivia herself had used her arms to tuck her legs up onto her seat. Her head now resting on her knees. Yadakon didn't seem to care, each of his steps splashing water around and soaking his slacks. The drains in the floor are working overtime to keep the water at a minimal level. An unsettling feeling washes over me as we enter the atrium, the interior of the school pitch black from the lack of lighting. At least we aren't dealing with wet floors, but navigating the halls in the dark is a new difficulty. Olivia brought out her phone, using its flash as a light to shine our way, but I'm still unnerved. The only sound I hear is the squelches of my shoes and the awkward dripping from both Olivia and I. It was then I realized that Yadakon had left us behind. Mr. Yadakon? Her voice bounces down the dark halls of the school. Did you see where he went? Kinda, I think he went that way. I can just make out Olivia's hand pointing thanks to her phone. Towards the school's office. I keep pushing Olivia, though taking my time as I feel my shoes threaten to slip with each step I take. It's slow going between the eerie darkness and my slow steps. What should have taken us a minute at most takes about three minutes for us to wherever I arrive at the gala. Well, we're here. The storm rages against the glass ceiling. What's normally the source of the hall's natural lighting is now completely obscured by the typhoon. And there's still no sign of Yadakon. I withdraw my phone and turn its flashlight on too, in the hopes that to improve the situation. I can hear something else aside from us in the rain. Something that's getting closer. A tiny red light in the distance, there with the sound. The tiny ember bounces and sways in rhythm with the odd tapping. Until... Yeah, you smoking? Is that a fucking axe? I'm frozen for a second. The thought forces its way through me. He wouldn't even he wouldn't ever hurt us. Yadakon, what's what are you doing? Something is kicked aside. It's Olivia's painting from the art contest a few weeks back. It smacks loudly against the glass casing on the display case. These are the ones, yeah? What? I'm ignored. Yadakon's staring straight right at Olivia. You got the axe from the groom, or you mean the cigarette? She's also struck fearful. But she nods. Yadakon takes a deep breath and faces the display. What are you gonna do with that? Hey, Yadakon, wait, this is a bit extreme, isn't it?
more animation. You're right, he is pulling a Paul Allen. Oh, he's blushing a bit. <laughs> oh, we got the cute face again. Olivia, it's gone. Both of them. This should have this should have been done long ago. Yeah. Yadakon, this is, it's crazy. I know. What about the other things in the case? Who fucking cares? Those students graduated ages ago. You know how many still do art? None. If they're if they're collateral, so someone else can f can. If they're collateral, so someone else can, fine by me. But Olivia, you got no other big paintings now, do you? She shakes her head. That's a shame. Look what I just did. I can make another. Yes, that's what I need to hear. You make me so proud to hear that. Do you remember? In sophomore year, when you challenged me to think of something I'd wanted to do and set a goal to do it? Of course. I couldn't think of anything back then. But there has been one thing I've been wanting to do for a while now. And like you said, some company could really help. Olivia grips my hand just a little tighter. Promise not to laugh? Never. Would you mind asking me again, Yadakon? Sure. I believe it was... If you could leave right now and do anything you wanted, what would you want to do? Uh, good question. Probably take a trip down to Japan. Anything at all? Yep. I want to... I want to go see a fountain. And, and paint it for you. Fucking... Brilliant. Is a fountain here? There's a park not too far from here, and you can barely see a fountain in the center of it from the window. You can't see it right now in the storm, but I want to go there. I think I know of it. The one in Stig Equestrian Park? That's wonderful, Olivia. Yadakon stumbles a bit. I rush to give him a shoulder or some shards of glass crunching under my feet. Good thing the power's out. No cameras up or anything. Won't you get in trouble for this? I'm always in trouble for something. And ordinarily, I'd just take the hit. Especially for something like this. That Mia chick can take the fall. To hell with her. Oh, fuck. I don't think you should be doing that as a teacher, but also fucking hell. <laughs> Olivia manages another small smile. I'm looking forward to that painting. You better get it for me. I will. And you better help. Of course. Yadakon motions for us to wait by the school's entrance. For a while, we sit there. Yeah, he's off hours. He's not paid for this. Yeah, but even like even then, right? I don't know. Uh, Yadakon. He can't say what he wants. I, I like how he's been swearing. And then he's been smoking. Then again, I'm a sucker for characters who smoke. As is uh, apparent by my profile picture. Do you have one, Yadakan? Hmm? Do you have something you want to do? I'm already doing it. No, really. Really? Teaching high school is a great job that nobody ever regrets. You should pose that question to Inko there. 
All this character development and he's barely said a word. Alright, Inko, what about you? What do I want to do, huh? If I could pick anything, I guess... I want to go to college. I want to make plenty of friends. I want to find true love. Ooh. <laughs> what would be in character for Inko? Let me munch it over. As I finish this burger that I still haven't finished. Good music. If I could do anything right now... A more ambitious dream, I can get behind it. It's a bit unimaginative. That's just hater talk. You should probably start looking more into the how and not the what. Like you would know, I can totally do it. Pfft, sure thing, Mr. Successful. Your blog doesn't even have 10 followers. You looked me up? Yeah, I got bored. Yeah, at least follow me if you're gonna cyberstalk me. That goes for everyone watching the video on YouTube right now. I know you fuckers watch this video. <laughs> Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Leave a comment down below. I'll follow you when you make good content. And say that if that's what you actually think. <laughs> also, your interpretation of Godzilla you copy from a video essay sucks and you should feel bad. I copy Yadakon's emotion with the axe and karate chop Olivia's leg. I didn't feel that, jackass. Well, I guess some banter is a form of motivation as well. Sounds like you have quite the promise to uphold now, Inka. Boo. Even with the disses being thrown around, what stood out most was the wild grin on Olivia's face. Between the staccato of rain and the uproarious laughter, time seemed to non-existent. I could feel the muscles in my face ache brought on by bouts of laughter and grinning which make the taxi's arrival so disappointing. As we were escorted out to the parking lot, our mirth was replaced with something more. Calm. Comfortable. An easy quiet that let my thoughts wander, back to the things that we said to each other. Back to what our tarot teacher had said. Navigating the world alone. For all the time I spent around Olivia and her friends, it never really occurred to me that she'd harbor something like loneliness. I mean, Damien alone is like a wild crowd composed of a single madman. And Liz, she's practically the group's nanny or something. Hmm. The driver of the yellow van leans into his horn, and I can feel a baleful leer on me even through the haze and fog and raindrops. Or haze of fog and raindrops. 
Olivia draws her hood up, and I hold my jacket above my head. With a final look to Mr. Yotakon, we thank him. No need for thanks. Seeing my students grow and prosper into adulthood is all the reward the salt fossil needs. With a wave, he sends us off into the rain, to the irate taxi man's van that yells at us about his burning gas. While Olivia works to get herself situated in the cab, I turn back. Mr. Yotacon is sagging, meandering back into the building. Oi, hurry up! Right, alright. It's, it's been about a week since the typhoon. The day after were surreal. The days after were surreal with how things just realigned with the old schedule. Yadakon was serious when he told Olivia to keep off that wrist. He effectively banned her from painting until it got better. Meaning all week I've been doing our work as a group. It was exhausting. But today I'm pretty excited. I'm not gonna say it. For the first time, Olivia is actually joining me on the metro. We're headed for the city. It's going to be a bit of a trip. For the last several nights, Olivia has been using my inbox to store sketching ideas while her wrist heals. On Thursday, she even attempted sending a few left-handed sketches, but gave up after the third or fourth malformed rat. Then listened to game-changing invitation through our group chat. Her uncle has some business in the city, and he told her she can do something with the time shit since it's her car. So, she's invited the rest of us to join her for lunch at a fancy place. It's got us pretty thrilled. Is it Moe's? It's got me pretty thrilled. Olivia understood the order to stay off her hand, but that doesn't mean make her less manic about wanting to get back into painting. Why'd you agree if you don't want to go? Well, a trip to the city won't suck so bad if you're there. Even if I really, really want to start pa that painting. You're almost done healing. It won't be much longer, Yin. I know it. But Yadakon said you should at least wait for Monday. Yeah, that too. Besides, I don't want to be around Damien while he's... Ugh. Poor guy looked positively miserable when I picked Olivia up. He was pale and shaking and the floor between his feet was left bubbling after a particularly powerful sneeze. Has it ever been that bad? It happens well like once a year. It's one reason we don't share a room. One moment he's fine, the next he's inebriated. This car is weird. You ride this every day? Yep. This is even my seat. Right next to the folding accessibility seat? What, did you start accounting for me before we even met? Heh, <laughs> maybe I did. She mouths something and rolls her eyes, but there's a clear smile after she goes back to watching the passing buildings. Compared to a car ride together, this feels a little more intimate. Yeah, Damien. I don't know what's up with Damien. I guess he just got sick from the, the rain. Even if there are more people in close proximity, none of them paid us any mind. Just Olivia and I. Guys, come on. PDA, PDA. Several stations later, the metro grinds to a halt at our stop. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Olivia shoes my hand away when I go to help her at the metro. We step out into the chilled air of the city. I'm already getting goosebumps. That cold front is really making itself known. We should find Liz quickly before Olivia starts shivering. Are you seeing a long, big green neck anywhere? None that I know of. Great, that sounds awesome. We looked around through the alleyway into the closest shops. Maybe she's in the bathroom? I'd wait around, but I don't want to make Olivia wait out in the cold. Did we go to the wrong stop? Just text her already? Crap, right, I'm dumb. What the hey? Where'd you go? 
Ugh! Jump scared. A moment later, her head ropes out the door of a nearby coffee shop, followed by the rest of her. Hey, Inko! Glad you guys could make it! Yeah, I just got confused. I didn't know you'd be in the cafe there. Really? I've been in there the whole time. I messaged Damien and I went in to escape the cold and... Where's Damien? Oh man, he got nasty sick right before we left. He couldn't make it. But, but... Is he fine? He'll be fine, I think. Okay, alright. Poor Liz, she wanted to do another double date, but now her, her her half isn't there. Well, that just throws a wrench into all my plans now, doesn't it? I guess they'll have fun without him, right? Yeah, I know, it was just, uh... Well, I was hoping between the four of us... It'd be like a double date. Huh? Yeah, debuted me, you and Inko. All together for a fancy lunch. Uh, Liz, Olivia and I aren't... Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I just assume. Boy, this is embarrassing. Whole day seems like everything's going wrong for me. It, it's fine. Yeah, well, we can still have a good time. I'm still having lunch with friends. I'm sure you guys will love it too, come on. Wait, so does that mean that she... That she... That her and Damien are actually a thing? Has that ever been stated? Liz leads us through the streets, pointing out our destination when it comes into view through the towering skyscrapers. What's that black splotch over there? <laughs> the building is more akin to a narrow spike aimed skyward with a large disc-like room built near the tip. It's Cope because he's a himbo? And you see that space near the top? It's the restaurant. Are you- what the- what the fu- okay, you know what, whatever, Rice. We're not getting into your fake cell shit. <laughs> they built it in a way that the whole thing slowly rotates, so your view changes while you eat. Oh, I've been in a restaurant like that before. You can see the whole city, the ocean, and even the mountains. Whoa. I've gone here with my parents all the time as a kid, and I always daydreamed about bringing friends as an important guest there, and... Well, uh, you know, business type stuff. This will be my first time on my own. Well, you know. Yeah. You'll see there's even a... Whoop, hold it. We lost Olivia. We turn around to check our on our errant gator friend, who's a bit farther behind and grimacing. She comes slowly rolling in, fighting to hide the slight winces every time she pushes herself. Oh, sorry. It's fine. You sure you don't want help? I can manage on my own, please. Alright, you wanna lead the way? Alright, is that space need to look in place, right? She rolls ahead, Liz and I follow behind, continuing our conversation. The restaurant is a is an impressive spire, with the actual seating area 30 floors up or up so or so up. Wow. After Liz verifies her reservation, we're let into the special of elevator with a glass front. After a minute or so of rising above the city, we stop at the, and the doors slide open to reveal the restaurant. It's a circular room with the seating by the windows and an inner ring for bars and the kitchen making up the center. Definitely a carefully crafted place. I wonder if it would be kind of a it would be the kind of place my parents would bring me to. A waitress greets us and leads us to a table by the windows. <laughs> One of the seats closest to the window is moved so Olivia's wheelchair can fit by the table. She approaches the space and stops. She's looking down, out the window. Can we switch seats? Afraid of heights? Shut. Alright. 
I obliged, shifting the seat over so she sits instead by the aisle. Quite a view, huh? I can see why it'd make you squeamish, Olivia. Heights also scared of living daylights out of me. What? Are you afraid of heights, Liz? Well, yeah, isn't everyone? What? That doesn't make any goddamn sense, Liz. Your head hangs three stories above your shoulders and heights scare you? Look, acrophobia is the irrational fear of heights, okay? So of course it doesn't make sense, but still. But also your ground- like, your, your, your feet are on the ground. I think that's the most important thing. The that your feet are on solid, steady ground is very important. That- ugh, whatever. Heights suck. We agree on that at least. So, what do you think? It's very nice. I can see why we wanted to come here. Liz nods. My family usually comes here once a year. Uncle Ferris has to remember to bring along a letter from the owner saying he's fine to let in, that he won't bring the whole tower down. Heh. <laughs> what the hell is Biske? Olivia's looking into the menus, right? Right, we're here to eat. Lobster Biske? It's lobster tail with a creamy kind of soup. Then why not call it lobster soup? Biske is a stupid word. I look down at the menu myself. It's all your standard options, between pastas, sandwiches, cuts of meat... Some weird novelty things, but I actually like trying those. Guess I'll have... Ooh! I get to choose. Double tropical cheeseburger with pineapple sauce. Chicken pizza. The chicken is the crust. <laughs> what? The chicken is the crust? The entire leg of cow. Carnivore section. Samies with Olivia! Vol caldera kebab. The wooden steak is even carved to look like the restaurant. Alright, Rice, you choose. I don't think this has any impact on the story. If it does, we'll fuck. <laughs> I'll just finish eating these fries from my burger. Bob? Sounds good to me. Uh, you sure? With onion rings. If you want it, I'm buying. They serve breakfast all day, too. I'm going with their pancake platter. Lives waves a waitress over and, and we give our orders. Nostalgia pick? You got me. It takes me way back. She stares out the window. I'll look out at the horizon as well. The view has shifted a bit to show the mountains. We all look out for a long while. Maybe a little too long. Ordinarily, this would be around the time Damon would say something that kept the conversation going. Oh, right. He's usually the one bringing us all together. Yeah, it is strange to think about, but Liz and Olivia aren't really more than acquaintances. But during lunch, it's Damien that always makes sure everyone else is included in the conversation. Nothing comes to mind. I don't think I'd make a good Damien. One moment, please. I ring Damien up in the hallway. He's sick, yes, but hopefully he'll have something for me to use. If he picks up, please. Oh, it's Finny! Yellow? Vinny? I want to talk to Damien. Nah, he's out right now. Mom's with him in the backyard. He's puking his guts into him to a bucket. Why? Pest control guy buys- <laughs> pest, pest control guys buy it from us for 50 bucks. Gross. <gasps> what did you want for him? I could tell him when he comes back in. Oh, uh, why not? I wanted to know how he always keeps our friend group so lively. Like, I was considering small talk, just bringing up movies or something. Ew, no, movies suck. Nobody actually likes them. What? I'm playing Fortnite. I'll turn it down so you can hear me. Bro, you playing Fortnite? I heard what you said. It was just dumb. Was it? Uh, yeah? There's a pause for a moment. 
Movies always sucked. Like, they started in black and white and without sound and they never really got any better. Even when they peaked in the 70s, they only barely became watchable. Have you ever even watched The Godfather? Dad made me watch that stuff and it just sucked. You're a bit young to understand The Godfather, though. Yeah, exactly. No, you probably shouldn't get it. That explained the whole plot to me, the ins and outs, and it really was just mid-trash. <laughs> Damn, actually, uh, actually, I think this is rice. That movie won awards, you can't just call it trash. Yeah, I can. Movies are just a trash genre of content. Even the best ones are usually just polished turds that waste your time. Okay then, what's a good movie? Mm. Ever heard of Mr. Beast? How, how about story time animations? Okay, never mind, it's not rice. <laughs> Unless you <laughs> Vinny is so me. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I'm not! Any popular content on you, Snoot, <laughs> provides more value for your time than the classics that you old people fought over, and it still sucks. Those aren't even movies! They move and I watch them. Not my point, you troglodyte. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> As you could ever even think of comparing that slop to the likes of Star Wars, The Godfather, Blade Runner 2049. Movies are one massive pile of doo-doo fart, but even it can sometimes make something mediocre. These are billion dollar franchises. Millions of people would disagree with this deranged nonsense. Doo-doo fart. Oh my, you little... Listen, you little chump, next time I see you, I'm gonna wring your little neck like a wash rag. What? Who is this? Shit. Calm down, calm down, kill him later. Nuts, I didn't get the advice. I can't believe Inko would make death threats to a kid. I slumped back to my seat and slumped down, catching my breath. Whoa, you alright? Your eye is twitching. I don't think I've ever been more angry in my life. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. You wouldn't make death threats to a kid? No, I wouldn't! What the hell? Shut up, I'll kill you. I rubbed the tension from my face. Fine, I could be a good Damien all by myself. So, uh, Liz? Yeah? Imagine when we first met, you wanted to be an art dealer, getting the right people to the right paintings, right? How's that going? Oh, yeah, it's going great. I just got accepted to Marshland U, actually. Oh, snap. Yeah, I finally got everything all worked out for myself. I'm gonna hit the ground running once I graduate. That's pretty cool. I'm still figuring things out. You too, right, Olivia? I only got short-term girls right now. But I'm interested in what Liz was talking about. Right, I'm sure it wouldn't be a problem for Olivia to replace the stolen painting. But what was annoying was having to contact the treasury and administration about the broken cabinet. I mean, what even happened? <laughs> Whoever did it, I wish they could have dealt with Mrs. Scaler's neurotic tantrum the way I did. We're still finding glass shards all over the floor and I get screamed at as if I'm the one responsible for it. Wow, Yadakon really did make a mess of the place, huh? Scaler needs to put the coffee mug down sometimes. Jeez. It's not a problem anymore. We've already ordered a new display. It should be installed next month. Oh, uh... I got off track. What were we talking about again? The art dealing thing. I'm actually interested. Oh, well, the plan is to be able to open my own business. I'll start online and work my way up to having a physical location. Uncle Ferris told me he's willing to help me figure out the legal parts out. 
I've already gotten a few connections. Some people that might be interested in being involved in that and that run involved that run some pretty decent prices for me. I mean, and I'll be selling my own works too. I've gotten even better at painting since the start of the year. Have you noticed? I think you have, yeah. Although since I'm no artist, I'll admit some of the details are probably lost on me. This nuts. Maybe I'll buy one sometime. You'll give me a discount, right? Ha, <laughs> maybe. Um, Olivia, have you painted anything good recently? No. Oh, sorry. It's fine. Well... I got one I really want to be doing. Why don't you? Because I got dragged here instead. Dang it, Olivia. I mean, not that I'm mad. Liz looks like she wants to say something. The thought dies down on her tongue. Yeah. The conversation, and the tension, thankfully, gets interrupted as our food arrives. The social media influencer in me itches to take a photo of each plate, especially with how good the presentation is. Dang, I should have brought my camera along with me. Wait, I have my phone. Say Olivia. <laughs> I turn just in time to see her clamp her jaw on the hunk of meat, tearing it right off the bone. Hmph. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, how's it taste? She takes a moment to chew her food before setting it down the hatch, then smiling as she gives me a, gre a greasy thumbs up. Liz chuckles from Olivia's good review as she lowers her head to give to get her first bite of her pancakes. Given that her neck is making movements equivalent to doing the happy dance, I'm guessing that the pancakes are good here. My view had changed again, and now having noticed I could almost feel the slow rotation of the room. I savor my onion rings while watching the Volcaldera bluffs pan right by us, taking in the amazing view. My thoughts reach out for my camera, already calculating the restaurant's rotation with the proper setting to capture the full 360 panorama I could achieve. And a separate section of my mind recalls the other panoramic of the city I saw. The one that is now nothing more than shredded debris. Say, Liz. The Brachiosaurus takes a moment to respond as she attempts to cram her snout into her glass of water. Glass, no straw. Yeah? So, you mentioned all about wanting to be an art dealer and be part of the system. I guess it'd be cool if we could work together. Come again? I don't know, it just seems like a decent idea. No, I get you. Now it's Liz's turn to pause from her food, sit upright and carefully tap the napkin of her closed lips. Um, maybe, but I don't think you'd want that, honestly. Uh, no, that'd be cool. I'd like that. Oh. Um, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. Not sure. Yeah, I'm trying to get this whole thing off the ground on my own. Without others' help, right? Like how you feel about your art stuff? That's different. The point is, it's, up, it's important to me that my start is as self-sustaining as possible. But you just said you had connections, and your uncle? Yeah, family and such, not, uh... Olivia raises that iconic eyebrow. Friends, or is it just me? Olivia, don't even start making- don't even start to make a scene. I have to do something. Olivia, Liz, come on, guys. Can we finish lunch first? How am I making a scene, Liz? I'm just curious about the real life for once. Well, not like this, then. I'd rather you go back to giving me the silent treatment. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. What have I done? What's your deal? Damon and Inko want us to be friends? Here I am actually trying, and what am I? Not worthy enough for your stuck-up? Ugh! You didn't want my friendship before, or Damien's for years. It just sounds a bit like you just want to be friends now because you can get something out of it. I want to be friends, just not like that. 
I thought things would finally start getting good. Livia, there's lots of people less fortunate than you. You have the support of your friends, all the offers. You can't blame me if you just ignore both. Liz, I... Let me finish, please. I'm not mad. I envy you, I admit it. Anyone would, effortlessly getting that attention and help. I hate it. I know, and I know it's wrong, but that's what I've been thinking about for a while. I see all these things you have available to you all these years, and you just take them for granted. I just think it's a wasteful way to live. Looks, sorry, I, I appreciate you guys. After telling to my face how you'd rather be elsewhere and not here, uh, not here while eating at my expense. You know what, Olivia? This is the most nice I can do for you at the moment, because you really don't deserve anything else. Liz! Liz claps a hand over her mouth. Olivia doesn't respond. She looks down at her plate. I'm gonna use the bathroom. She pushes herself away from the table and through the aisle. Oh no. I'm sorry, Liz. I didn't mean to snap. It's alright. Once Olivia gets back, you can apologize. No, I don't think I can. After everything, I think I deserve that much. Good god. The brief was just to just get these two talking and have a good time, and it's like a grenade was thrown into the table. Wow, I'm a terrible fucking Damien, let me tell you. Liz? Yeah? Why didn't it work? Why didn't what work? I know you two aren't in the greatest of terms, so I tried to keep conversation going. So it wouldn't get awkward and nobody would get left out, like Damien does. I feel like this was somehow my fault. But how? I did everything I was supposed to. Mm, I don't think you did anything wrong. Why does this never happen around Damien? Good question. I don't know. Liz picks up at her plate, popping the yolk on her over easy egg. She's probably not in the mood if I pushed any further and said anything I want to say right now. Olivia wouldn't like me protruding right now either. There's no options. I try to think of something to do, but nothing. I can't think of doing anything at all. Not without making someone uncomfortable, or worse, getting them mad at me. And I've never even anticipated something like this happening. It's frustrating. I can't do anything, but I can't do nothing, obviously. Not if I want to smooth things over. Right now, Olivia's in the bathroom. She's actually just fooling around the hallway, but the point is the two are separated. I can work something out. Should I keep trying then? I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. I think I'd rather you didn't. Come on, Liz, help me out here. Ask Liz for a help. How does she know how to deal with avoiding upsetting others? Huh? Go find Olivia. Hold on. Come on, Liz, help me out here. Ask Liz for help. How does she know how to deal with avoiding upsetting others? Or go find Olivia. I think now's my chance to start confronting Liz. So I don't think go find, going to find Olivia is the right option right now. That said, ask Liz for help, or come on Liz, help me out here. for help. 
Liz? Yeah? Could it be the case that doing what you're supposed to doesn't always work? Is that a trick question? Of course it isn't. Is that what you're thinking? Well, you guys got in an argument over it. Olivia got hurt over it. I feel a bit responsible. Nonsense. This stuff, this stupid stuff is our own petty catty squabble. Well, I want to do something to fix it. Hmm? Well, I have an idea of what to do. Thing is... I really don't want to upset anyone. Or worse, get them mad at me. You only want to do things that others will support then. Yeah. But here is not an option, I don't think. It's a catch-22, sure. You're great with people, you're on the school public council, probably have lots of arguments there. Like you wouldn't believe it. Why do you want not want to go find Olivia? Because I feel like right now is the best time to could like get uh to improve Olivia's situation with Liz. Besides, I don't think we, we we could really do much for Olivia going to talk to her right now. I think she did the right call of just like leaving the situation to de-escalate things a bit. Liz looks out the window. Guess that's a good question to ask. Well, here's how I see it. If I have something that needs saying, I'll just say it. It doesn't matter how others think in that case. Some things you just have to be cold with. That's just how some things are. Oh. Sorry if that's not the answer you're looking for. No, it was good. I appreciate your perspective. It's actually a good example of itself. I think it's what I needed to hear. Ha, huh, that's a good way to put it. Thanks for the advice. I'll try to make things right once Olivia gets back. Sure. I focus on my food and what I'll say while we wait for Olivia's return. Liz offers to trade her bacon strips for a few onion rings. Sucker! Finally, Olivia comes rolling back to the table. I'm back. Hey, you were gone for a while. Yeah. Things cool here now? I was actually about to say something about it, about it to resolve everything. I can't decide who's right, you're my friends. Liz is right, Olivia needs to think of others more. Or Olivia's right, Liz is being petty. Nope. So we're either a cow who doesn't take a stance. It'd be for nothing if I just said you guys are both right. Well, I guess not for nothing, but... I don't know. I don't feel like- Olivia's definitely not in the right here. Like, she was being a bit insensitive. At the same time, Liz was just kind of giving her the cold shoulder, huh? Like, she wasn't really giving any explanation. Maybe I do just be a coward and say I can't decide who's right. I was not expecting to get back to back shit. Is there a history button? Whoops. 
drop the fry. Oh, I can't believe it. <sighs> Leah's right, this is being petty. No. I think of all the options, the bottom one's the worst again. Yeah. Olivia. You really did hurt Liz's feelings when you said you'd rather not be here. After all, she's done... After all, she's done to make this trip happen. You not want to see how the others change this? Only if I feel like my choice is like object- like- like the choice is... Wrong, and so far I don't feel like I've made a bad decision yet. Like, the only- the only reason why I reloaded the other one was because, um... The way he was talking about like, oh yeah, I'll just go like pester people about advice so like how to get like closer to Olivia or shit like that. It just did not sound good at all to me. Sometimes I feel like the choices are like vague enough that I don't know how it's actually gonna come out. But... I do think that in this case... In this case in particular, what I'm doing feels right to me at least. If it's wrong in the end, so what? I'll just like do the other endings at a later point. And it is true you've been like this for a while. Said you had an inferiority complex regarding Liz. How much better than you you think she is? But you shouldn't say anything in regards to your painting skills or how you deal with friends. You've made great progress since, and what Liz said to you wasn't called for. But you really should take others' feelings into account more. Like how we do for you. You can't just be thoughtless like you've been, yeah? Okay, whatever. So, we're good? Sure. Thank you, Inko. That went much better than expected. After things settled down, we finished off our meals. Well, Olivia finished our meals. Liz had noticed at first when one of our- her whole pancakes simply vanished. I thought my onion ring pile was looking smaller by the minute. Looking Olivia's way, she simply waved at us with the most bizarre concoction of onion rings, flapjacks, syrup, and beef on her plate. But I'll make you guys better food than this later. The theft of our food stopped shortly after that, and though the portions had diminished, we all were thoroughly satisfied with the meal. I offered to pay, or at least pitch in with the check, but Liz refused. She insisted since it was her idea to begin with. But I always figured out it was the man's place to pay for a date, and this was a date, kinda. Neither of our hands lifted from the tiny leather booklet. They don't know how long we spent playing tug of war over it. Olivia at least found it amusing, even recording our stare down on her phone. But victory was mine, as I managed to palm my debit card to the waitress before Liz could give her back to the bill booklet. Let's go, we're gentlemen! We're gentlemen! With that done, all that was left for us here was making the most of the view. Olivia led the way to the observation deck on the floor beneath the restaurant. And she immediately regretted it, as the blast of cold air even had me shiver a bit. The altitude plus the late fall weather meant the deck was mostly clear of guests. But the view was easily worth the cold, as I made the mental note to come back here one day with my DSLR. We slowly moved to the railing so we could fully take in the skyline from the bluffs and out toward the ocean. Along with the city's skyscrapers that were dwarfed by the spire. And as I scan over it, I double down on the mental note. The seeing Olivia silhouetted by this beautiful view is... <laughs> I don't get how you two can stand in this temperature. Liz doesn't look that that cold. All she's doing is rubbing her arms in a theatrical manner. I'm gonna be by the elevator, guys, okay? Her head moves next to Olivia and there's a hush whisper shared between them. 
Finally, Liz's body turns and leaves, her head following shortly after with a beaming smile. Olivia? Don't ask. Her eyes remain on the horizon. Maybe it is a little colder though, as Olivia's face is slowly turning red. Something up? Well... Her eyes trail down on, and her hands raise up until she's carefully examining her wrists. I watch as she carefully tests her hand, wincing occasionally as she slowly flexes and rotates her hands. About the painting. Not until you're better. I know, I've been thinking about it. I'm going to be way out of practice when I'm all better. So you're going to practice. She smiles as she turns to me, probably excited about the prospect of starting work on that soon. Yes, I have the mental image for it in my mind and everything. Her smile lessens though, and her tone becomes uneasy. I just want to make it perfect. I have the mental image, but I won't have the skill. Plus, between the carpal tunnel and rushing out all those pieces for Mia, I think I understand what she's getting at, but... Her smile is back again. Once I can paint again, I need time for practice. I want to show Mr. Yonakon the greatest piece I can create. Do you need anything? My words cut my thoughts off. No, I have all the paint and... No, I mean, do you need any help with your practice? Her face glows red again. M maybe Well, I don't know how much I can help- how much help I can be with- what with my complete lack of painting talent. But otherwise, yeah, I'll do whatever I can for you, Olivia. I promise. I cement it with a smile and a thumbs up. Thanks. I think we only stood out on the viewing deck for a few more minutes. After a particularly cold draft had swept over us, Olivia figured she'd had enough of the chilly air here. We made our way back inside to the elevator station, where Liz was standing idly. She and Olivia looked at each other for a moment. The two held their stare locked in on each other for about half a minute before Olivia looked to the side. So, uh, what else is there to do here? A lot, evidently. Once we had gotten back to the terra firma, Liz... Uh, to terra firma, Liz had taken up and up to herself, upon herself to walk us around the entire block. The whole area was like a miniature theme park, with a lot of street vendors and selling tourist trap gifts. We spent the rest of the day just wandering the city park here. Enjoying the late fall day to the best we could. Eventually, as the sun sunk below the horizon, Mr. Ferris found us. I'd forgotten that we'd, co we'd come here that we'd come here in the first place because of a business meeting of his. Liz and him waved us goodbye as they broke away and headed for the parking lot. While I pushed a very tired gator girl to the metro station. I don't think she minded much, honestly, as she clutched her tail to her chest and used it as a makeshift pillow. She looks so sweet like that. As the perfect background for my phone. She must never learn of this though. Cause I don't think I'd survive. But it'd be worth it. After going home that night, Olivia texted me all night and well into the morning. We ended up talking about all sorts of things. Mia, our art, various shows, just about everything. <laughs> Never seen her that excited before. For someone with sore hands, she sure types fast. For someone who that doesn't much like talking at all, she sure types a lot. I certainly can't keep up. And when she didn't want to talk, she sent more doodles and sketches. Sleep wasn't really an option on my end either. Guts's doodle ventures were quite entertaining to read. Since then, we've been texting more every night. Oh god, it's over. We went through the e-girl discord dating phase. Not as much, since I do need my sleep. I don't know if this scene's gonna be a while. Cause it's, we've been streaming for three hours and ten minutes. Ugh. Right now I'm just waiting for our class to end. Mr. Trigums is apparently one of the those substitutes that demands complete silence until class is over, but doesn't care beyond that. 
So even though I'm sitting about two feet away from Olivia, we're having to text each other. She's quite the storyteller with these doodles. Like right now, as I try to keep up with the tales of Guts writing, uh... What's he writing again? Oops. Oh, 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 go back. Go back. Oops. He's piloting the main golem from Gundam Finn. Yeah, it's already been three hours. Time flies, huh? My streaming thing says that I've been streaming for 3 hours and 11 minutes. <laughs> uh, ah! <sighs> Anyways, Gundam Finn, is it good? A giant robot from one of the shows she's been wanting to us to watch together. I mean, we would. I totally want to. Just Olivia and I sitting side by side on my couch. Maybe as we're getting tired, we start leading against each other. I could even offer to keep her warm. <laughs> Whoops. Catching my phone on the precipice of the, my desk, I see that Olivia had sent an even more detailed version of the previous Guts drawing. Show us. Huh? This is why, for how dumb it is, as it is, Finn is still fun to watch. Yeah, no, it's been three hours. Uh, I need to take another screenshot. Let's go. All right. I don't get it. <clears throat> you almost didn't get your phone just now. If you'd watch it, you would. Oh, that's such a good- Oh fuck! Stop sending me all these good reaction images. Yeah, if I stop now, I have to wait until next week. That's very true. However, I don't want the VOD to be too long. Uh, anyways. What should I call this one? Uh... Rat Gastard. If we ever get a drunk one, I'm gonna call it Rat Plastered. <laughs> Rat. What would this one be? Rat Madstered. I am so good with names. Alright. One day, maybe. Though only if it's with her. One day, yes. Ah, crap, teacher. Don't want to lose my phone. Okay. After a couple minutes without any alerts, I accept that the Gator Girl really is done for now. With a click, with a quick look at the clock on the wall, I figure I've got a few more minutes before I absolutely must hide my own phone. Gotta couldn't spin out for uh, out for about a week and a half, so we've been stuck with Mr. Trigums. Or oh, did he get like punished? Apparently, he doesn't like electives. I swipe back, looking through the pieces she'd sent me over the last couple hours. A lot of references so go over my head, but the few that don't earn a hearty chuckle from me. And there's the more detailed ones, the drawings that'd be good enough to actually render. I smile as I save those. I'd been meaning to ask if she'd finished one back when she started doing this. But I never got around to it, simply saving it in a folder. A folder that's grown to a couple dozen now. Oh. With Jerome Clarkson, please come to the office. With Jerome Clarkson, please come to the office. Thank you. Beep, 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 beep. The announcement makes me nearly drop my phone again. Oh, that was like the, the fucking, um, what's it called? Like the, the mic.
Oops. Uh, I come come here to the razor tool. What this the fuck? Something we are going to oh, my beats just turned um, on. So with this. Oh! <laughs> I hit the play button on my beats. It'd be going on all morning, just calling random students to the office. A buzz from my phone has me check it again to see another message from the Gator Girl. Also, did that fuck up the audio? I think it did. Hold on. Never mind. She's acting weird today. Weird. Okay, no, there is audio. Okay, we're fine. Settings. Are we still having music? Yeah, okay. I look at our substitute. Mr. Trigums isn't paying any attention to us. In fact, he's just kind of looking through the desks he sat at. Weird. Same there. Same here. I think it has to do with the office thing. I don't know. I was thinking it was maybe a, it was the short day, maybe. That was another thing. I think the entire class realized something was up with how fast class periods were going today. Oh man. I look at my phone on the floor, the corner of the screen chipped away. No! Picking it back up before any of my classmates could step on, on it their way on their way to the lunch. I also just noticed that Ben wasn't here in class either. Hurry up, short day means lunch is earlier. Heading to lunch, I realize I'm actually not that hungry. Strange, but I guess that's an internal clock thing. I'm just so used to eating at the same time every day. Looks like I'm not the only one, as the usual war zone in the cafeteria has expanded to spill into the surrounding hallways. It's loud enough to even cover up the continued announcements. Urkel, thank you. Mostly. I've gotten pretty good at weaving through the chaos relatively unscathed, but man. These guys have way too much energy. What are they even fighting about? But as always, the table in the back is left alone. Damien is pogging. Damien is chattering loudly about his day so far to Olivia, who's occasionally poking Liz across the table with a toy claw in hand. Oh, that's a cool toy. Liz flails her arms around to shoo away the offending poke, but never bothers to crane her neck down from the rafters. She perks up when she sees me. Yo, it's Inko! Hey, what's going on at Olive Garden today? Livia. Whack his noggin. The meter stuck falls on my head. Gah! It's just a joke, a quip. A jest, if you will. How long did it take you to come up with that one? It was about two in the morning last night. Whack him again. Hey! Best ten dollars I've ever spent. It looks a little familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought when I saw it. Just like the real one, she'll bully you for saying dumb stuff. Bite me. She makes the head gnaw on my face a little. <laughs> I'll go sit somewhere else. Do it. I got a new friend right here. Oh, wow, I have an actual friend that isn't addicted to makeup pheromones. That makes me so happy. Your ventriloquism needs a bit of work. I still think it's a little weird. Oh, live a little. Hmm, say, you guys aren't eating either, either? It's too early, I'll just eat when I get home. The lunch ladies don't really try on half days. Don't they not try normally? The difference makes itself known. I was out for like a week. I'm just gonna steal some of whatever Olivia makes later. Get your own. I've changed my mind. She has too much power. <laughs> this is great. Olivia reaches over to gnaw on Damien again and I snatch it out of the air. Ah, no! 
I have to hitch it right onto Olivia's snout. Bullseye, it's clamped shut. The evil is defeated. <laughs> While I'm giggling like a schoolgirl, Olivia uses the chance to grab the hand back. Fine, no more claw today. She hastily stuffs the plastic toy in her backpack. After some more small talk, Damien's attention wanders towards Liz, who seems to be lost in thought. Hey Liz, what's in your head? Huh? Oh, I was just thinking about earlier today. I was talking to Principal Scaler this morning while running some errands for Stuco, and she was really out of it. Out of it? Yeah, like she didn't want to be here today. I tried to pry, but she clammed up. I've never seen her like that before. She must have drank bad coffee or something. I don't think that makes people sad. I can tell you from experience, it just makes you really have to... <laughs> Looks like I got a text. Liz pulls out her phone, craning her head down to get a better look at the screen. It's from Ben. Come, have a student council meeting. Huh. Normally it's a bit more formal than that. I guess it's a half day and all. Oh well, duty calls. Sorry for having to leave early, guys. No worries, Liz. We can meet up after school. Sounds good. I'll see you all later then. What will you guys want to do after school? I don't know. Maybe we can hang out at my place. Too cold to get into the pool, but I'm sure we can think of something. I look over to Olivia, who doesn't seem to have any objections to the idea, but no input of her own. Got any ideas, Liv? Hmm. We could doodle some stuff. Like charades? Yeah, make it into a game of sorts. That sounds pretty fun, actually. Then I can really wipe the floor with Olivia. Oh, save your breath, Nito. You know my stuff will own you and your chicken scratch. Wanna bet? Ha! That's a sucker bet! What? Huh? Stream elements? Stream elements, are you okay? Did my stream stop or something? Why is it just not repeating that I'm streaming? <laughs> alright then, alright then, a loser has to pay for food. Deal. We shake hands, making the wager official. Would Olivia Halford please come to the office? Would Olivia Halford please come to the office? Thank you. My stream stopped? Oh fuck. Was it like... Oh shit, yeah, I'm seeing the, like, my- Oh god, what's happening to my bitrate? <sighs> uh! Well... What's going on here? Yeah, that's weird, I don't know what happened there. So I didn't see any issues on my side. Everything's still good? Bitrate's been awful, but it's been watchable. Oh, now my mouse is starting to freeze up. Hold on. Something is definitely wrong. Oh. Did the stream just go down again? What is going on out here? Yep, the stream just went down again, didn't it? Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, well... Uh, huh. I guess that just means I'll have to leave it here for today. Unless it stabilizes within like the next couple of minutes, but... I don't know what's- I don't know, I don't know what's causing that. Everything seems fine on my network. Maybe it's on Twitch's side. Is it broken down again? 
Okay, it looks like bitrate is stable now. Ah, pain. Pain. All right, how's it looking now? The monotone voice of the intercom, combined with the strange atmosphere of the school, is starting to unnerve me. We all look at the gator girl, who rolls her eyes and starts wheeling away from the table and towards the exit. After she'd left, everything felt more off. Lunch came to an end, and the school day was close to the same. Just a couple more periods before we can hang out somewhere with all the extra free time. I look at Olivia's desk, still empty five minutes into Procklin's class. I mean, yeah, she hates this class the most, but it's really become a habit at this point. Just like how it's become a habit for me to write an extra set of notes for Olivia. I look at the two mostly blank pages in front of me. Like with our teacher- with a, like with our other teachers, I notice something that's off with Procling. She barely says anything, instead of just asking us to read the chapter on, on the Great War. I do just as ask, and five pages in, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that it was the stupidest reason for a world war to break out. A bunch of European countries unhappy with being ruled by a bunch of other European empires deciding to revolt and dragging all their allies into the quagmire. I'm really struggling to make sense of the information, might worse with how outdated the textbooks are. Seriously, they're written so bad it ought to be a crime. It oozes pro-gilded age corporatism, the kind that genuinely believed that anything bigger than a gathering of ten people would form a unionism. With a sigh, I busy myself with taking notes for myself and Olivia. As I do, my eyes continue to wander the classroom. Everyone looks just as disinterested in the subject matter. I look over to Procling, and she herself doesn't seem interested in the subject matter as well. In fact, she's just kind of staring off into space. It's highly unusual, considering how much emphasis she puts on proper class focus. Yet there she is, spacing out like she's no better than the teenager she teaches on the daily. I'm almost tempted to raise my hand and ask her a question to snap her back to reality when a room speaker comes to life. Would Incognito please report to the office? Incognito, please report to the office. Thank you. I look up to Mrs. Prockling. I got called, but she's still the arbiter of who leaves her class and when. But she doesn't meet my eye at all. If anything, it looks like she's actively trying to avoid eye contact. I pack my things and shuffle out of the classroom. All the while, the stares and murmurs from other students grow even more intense. My mind immediately begins to wander. Why am I being summoned to the office? Ah, oh, fuck off. Am I offline? Yeah, okay. If the stream's just gonna keep crashing like this, I think it's just gonna be... I think I'm just gonna end it here. Uh, so, yeah, I guess thanks for coming. Uh, sorry about the bit rate frames at the end. I guess we're leaving it on a bit of a cliffhanger, actually. So, uh, yeah, no. So, tune in next time, I guess. Next week we'll be doing this again. Hopefully the internet stabilizes. Um, probably gonna be playing some Dragon's Dogma tomorrow, so uh, check that out if you're interested in that game. And other than that, yeah, thanks for coming. I'll see you all next time. Peace. Ah, fuck off! I hate this. Ah, I wanted to keep playing. <laughs>